Hello. Hi, everyone. Hopefully you can see and hear me okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream. I'm going to play some Inventors in a minute. Let's make sure everything's working okay. It's historically, it should be guaranteed, right? When you start something, you just launch into it. Well, we've got to have this back and forth, right? If, if you can even see any of it. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I'm very excited to see some more Inventors. The final game in the South Tigris trilogy. It's on Kickstarter now. I should say first, the link is in the description. It has launched. It is happening. And we're going to be having a look at the solo mode of it today, which, as you might expect, everything I'm doing is what a player will be doing. If you're playing it multiplayer, just open two of the stream and just look at my turns. The bot obviously gets to break all of the rules, doesn't have to pay for anything, doesn't even have to look at icons, and is probably going to get a lot invented. But hopefully we're going to get some more invented. Coming through? Brilliant. Thank you. And now there's just the panic of, oh, remember all of the bits? I think we've got it though. I have said, uh, when we were talking on Discord about this, about oh, how complex is this uh, compared to the others, compared to West Kingdom and stuff, I did say, like, I don't know when it was, it was probably only last week actually, <laughs> said like the, the most complex. But actually, as I kept coming back to it, I think like this, this seems to have like, maybe learning it was more complex, but it seemed to click a lot faster, if that makes sense, like refreshing and remembering all of the bits and bobs. And yeah. it, we'll see how uh, how well that comes across when I play it. I might get all of the rules wrong and then uh, it hasn't actually sunk in, has it? But hopefully that's not going to be the case. Hey, Skycroft. Hi, everyone. Made a stream. It's your first or not? Hey, Shem. How's it going? Thank you for joining us. Code designer Shem Phillips is in the chat. Putting me right. So, where are we? Well, we're in the South Tigris. We have wayfared. We've discovered stuff. We have been scholarly. We have studied up. And now it's time to put all of that knowledge to the test. And we've got to make stuff. We're going to be inventing things here. We are the inventors of the South Tigris. And a lot of the game hinges on these inventions that are down here. There's the main actions that we will be taking as well as some worker placements and stuff and burrowing in our own workshops. Just checking that the right button works. It does. Down here, we've got these boards that will house all of our various inventions. We need to build them. We need to publish them. We need to invent them in the first place. We can test them, uh, but it all kind of flows really nicely. You see these, these empty invention boards over here that have got nothing on them. Well, when they get, first the thing's got to be invented, and then we kind of lock some things in, the, the costs that it will take to actually construct this monstrosity, the automated saw, who could conceive of such a thing? It also adds things like, oh, there's an endgame scoring opportunity here to have a lot of influence in the Orange Guild at the end of the game. Maybe I want to build that, or once it gets built, publish it, and then I could have a a bit of uh, input on that in-game scoring. I get a, a taste of that. So they're empty boards, then things get invented. They've got this card on them. Once they have been invented, they can get built. That's how they get sent to this column. And this camera angle is cutting off the board just slightly. But we'll, we'll know how it's going once we've started. See so yeah, how they start off invented, then they get built and come over here. And the person building them, oh, suddenly I've got a stake in this. If somebody wants to publish this invention I've made this prototype of, then I'm going to have to get a bit of a coin for that. And I'm still going to get some end game points for whatever it says on the card here. And once they get published, they move into this category. The scoring changes, the costs change as they go through these columns. But we'll see all of it as we go on. So... Stuff to say before. Oh yeah, thank you. Thanks, James, for activating the bot. You can support me if you would like in the Patreon and Kofi places. And if you join me after I said it, then you can have a look at Inventors of the South Tigris, which is on Kickstarter right now. The link is in the description for the campaign page too. I'm getting me. I'm now that everything's okay. I can move away from my preview page and go to my make sure you remember all these bits page. I've made notes. No panic. Right, so start of round stuff. We don't do anything start of round in the first round. The bot always 
get start of round stuff, of course, but their start of round stuff is quite easy to do and it's on the back of their cards actually. They get three silver. They might use this silver to do actions with. Well, they probably will use uh, these, this silver to do actions with. Make sure mine's far away. Probably gonna have to reconfigure all of this once things get invented and I realize I've got no space. They have got two decks of cards here. Now I'll have to, I have already made their deck for this round to save time. They have got a little deck of worker-based cards, a little deck of dice-based cards, kind of representing us, placing our dice to do things, placing our workers to do things. And it tells you on the back of these cards, it's a little reminder of what they do in the start of round. And then based on the round that you're in, there's four rounds in the solo game. If you're playing multiplayer, you can play a short version of the game where you kind of skip one of the rounds with a bit of uh, setup magic. But uh, yeah, you can play the full four round game as well. So we are in round one. So you can see that the bot is gonna have four dice cards, two worker cards. That could change based on things that they do. Make sure I've got the piles right where they are, their worker piles next to where the workers are, so you remember what they are, because they're the same on the back. So I've made their deck, I've shuffled it up, that's what they do in the start of round. If we're playing solo or two players, there is a dummy player as well, but the dummy player is like, don't worry, there's, there's hardly anything to do for the dummy player. We reveal one of the dummy cards, and we have some dummy influence over here that's going to get placed in certain guilds. They are never going to do anything with this influence. They are just competing for majorities at the end of the game. If we have a look in the three guilds, can't do me play, get out of the way a bit. Obviously that influence can be used for a load of things, but if we still have it at the end of the game, then most in the blue is worth four victory points. Second most gets one, five and two for the orange, six and three for the black. Our influence is tracked from these pieces, but also if we can get tents in certain places, we can get influence in those guilds too. So the dummy players had some influence in some guilds. They've also got a ship over here, and they've got a ship here. The dummy player is our blue player. And so their ship is going to move to. This is also, you know, it's uh, like competing for things. Tiebreakers are judged by the ship moving forward and stuff. So they're going to move one, two, three, four spaces. There is a thing of when somebody gets to one of these sections, they reveal all the tiles. The dummy player doesn't do that. It's got to be a proper player doing it. And then along the bottom here, We've got three actions. If I just move this right as far out of the way as I can get it while still being in the green screen, I have got a few tiles here. On one side, they're just X's. On the other side, they are plus influence. So the dummy player is going to determine one action on the board. It's going to cost you an extra influence of a certain color to perform. And the other two actions, it says, are blocked off. So the one that's going to cost extra influence is the one over here. To refresh all your crafts people and get a card well it would it would cost one of each influence to do that as well as placing a worker there this round it's going to cost an extra blue if you want to do that and then just to tighten things up a little bit for the two-player game which is what the the solo is going for and then there are two block offs over here so we've got actions underneath each of the guilds all of these three spaces do this one action the choice of get a research tile or get some stuff it's the same for the, the different guilds, it's different effects, but it's spend some influence and something else of that guild. So this round, there are only going to be two opportunities to do it in the orange guild, and you can't just spend two orange influence to do this action. The same for the charcoal, you can't just spend one influence and one card. That's all the dummy player does at the start of the round. The only thing that they're going to do as well as compete for influence at the end of the game we will be doing actions and then at some point in the round you will decide to tent and that's kind of you know retiring from the round but it's not quite because you can still do some things but we will tent rest assured the first person to tent gets to place a dummy tent to block off one of the spaces so there's five uh, tenting opportunities you'll take one and then the dummy player will take another the second player to tent will only have uh, a couple to choose from or three to choose from so that's the dummy player stuff sorted and that's all the start of round stuff sorted so then we go on to player turns i am the first player so you're gonna have to hear some stuff but the the bot is very quick for how their turns go right let's go over to my player board then 
Yeah, I, th I think the solo needs to be the four rounds. I think I might be making that up. I hope I'm not. Hey, Sam McDonald. Thanks for joining us. Don't do that, is it? Right, hope I get it right. So, the player board over here. We have a lot of sections, but don't worry too much about it. Over here are our dice, you know, our, our dice workers that we can place. And we have four different sections of where our dice can go. Exhausted down here, we've got them, but we can't use them yet. The numbers are irrelevant, they get rolled when they are usable. And depending on where they are here, we've got actions we can take that brighten the dice. If we don't use them and they're just hanging around at the end of the round, they will brighten as well. And they go into different categories here. So our, our dice here are just ready. The numbers on them are what we can use them for. If they get brightened to the next stage, they will be determined. And you can, if you want to, bump their number up by one. If they enter all the way to the top, then you can bump their number up by up to five if you want. So basically you can you can go all the way up to six with things if you need it to be like that. If a colored die goes from here to here, you get to get an influence in that guild. There's a bit of extra things here. So we've got our dice ready place. We've also got a study over here. So this is separate. These dice aren't available right now. When we get dice, they'll come over here into our study. When we brighten things, we can also brighten things that are in our study and get bonuses as they go up and up. Every time you brighten things that are in here, you can either take the next bonus, but they remain in the study unavailable for you, or you can brighten them into the thing that are next to. Now they're available. They'd have to be rolled if they come out of the study. So yeah, the number again in the study is irrelevant for now. But yeah, there's a bit going on there. Do you want to leave them in here for bonuses or do you want to get them out so you can start using them for actions and things? Over here, we have got our Tower of Crafts people, and we have got six different crafters that will perform, well, they won't perform the actions. We do dice to do the actions, but a lot of the actions will require us to enlist the services of our crafts people. And depending on the level that they're on, they have a certain cost that they command, like, or oh, get the names right. They're not right here. I remember them all. That's the scribe. We use the scribe all the time. You forget the scribe. I remember the, the Tyler. Who could forget the Chandler? But the scribe up here. This is all down to a setup card that I had that t told me, you know, which starting workshop tile to get, uh, where my people would start, which colors of dice I start with where. So my scribe over here is quite prestigious. He starts at level four here. It's going to cost me two to put him to work. Everything else down here in level two and one is only going to cost one to start. And you see over here, my Chandler and my Blacksmith are actually inactive. So I'm going to have to reactivate them if I want to get them used. They will go up this tower. We will get different income benefits as we move them up the tower. You can start getting points at the end of the game if your craftsmen go high up. And yeah, there's a bonus if you clear off a level and then the tower starts climbing. We get different bonuses at the start of a round, depending on how far we've got at this tower. So you could really dedicate yourself to that to try and get your craftspeople as experienced as possible, usually by putting them to work. Sometimes there's actions that can let us do this. Over here, we've got our workshop and our camels. These are the places that we will be placing our dice, taking our main actions. Our workshops are special things that we can introduce more tiles to to have better effects. So we've got these basic actions over here. We've got an extra one that we got during setup. So this one basically means if we use a blue die when we place dice in the workshop, then we get to bring back all the dice from this workshop into our ready bit at the end of a round. Usually things you use get exhausted and you got to bump them up or wait around and stuff to get them used again. This workshop, if we can populate this with more tiles, we could potentially get a load of actions and then get these dice straight back. That's a little setup bonus that we've got over here. There are a load of little reminders of how loads of the actions work. We've got a hard limit of eight cards in our hand. We could spend two cards to brighten a die or refresh a craft person. So the main stuff we'll be doing is actions with dice, putting them on a camel to do one of the four main actions with the inventions, invent, build, publish, and test. What I didn't mention up front, there are dice spaces on all of the inventions. And once they have been built or published, uh, you can send your dice over here to test them. It's how you advance your ship. It makes the inventions worth more points. So you potentially want to do them to your own inventions, but 
sometimes you, you want that ship movement and you're prepared to give another player a point. So you can put your dice on the camels. We've only got two camels available in round one. Over here, we have got three workshops. That's what we can do these special actions with. The actions will get more and more empowered as we fill up the board with tiles. The other thing that we can do with actions is our workers. We've seen those worker placement spots. We can be largely spending influence, one worker per place over here. Over here, though, we've got some great big open spaces where we don't have to pay anything. And I think it's coming around to that time where I got to I got to make some decisions over here. So really, I start with this blue die. These are the numbers that I've got. I start with this blue die over here. So I kind of want to use it in that workshop. And I'd want a pair of dice, sevens or more. I wonder if can we get another tile in this row to activate it's a bit early to be doing this and i do i did think i'm sure this won't go this way now what i would really like to do in my plays of this so far one thing i've not done is really concentrate on you know just getting a load of inventing done i've done building i've done publishing i've done you know leveling up my craft people but i don't feel like i've done a lot of inventing so i'd like to make that the focus having said that though i'm wondering if i can maybe make this workshop a bit better by testing something so i was thinking over here you move your ship to get these workshop tiles there is another tile here that wants blue dice to activate it so this power will only kick in if you activated your workshop with a value of 11 or more and a blue die involved and i'll get some royalties for that there is the invention that we started randomly built out here it's been built by the neutral player it doesn't really exist it's just a setup thing don't worry about it. there's no more i'm not introducing more players into it i can move three spaces along the river i'm prepared to sacrifice a black die for this i do have a black die but it's in my study at the moment so i've thought this is my small bit of planning that i've done so far if i grab some dice either by doing a worker action out here I can brighten two dice and increase a die by one as well. I could brighten this, bring it out here, it would roll, brighten something else, maybe my yellow die, so I've got the full complement of the coloured dice that I would start with. Or down here, I've got a workshop action I could do, just any die I could send there to brighten twice and increase by one. And start off, let's let's do it with a let's do it with a die save my workers because you can get little bonuses if you haven't spent your workers for stuff so down here on my player board my first action is going to be activate one of my workshops doesn't do anything because i've got no tiles over here like extra it does its basic effect brighten two dice increase one by one so i'm gonna so i've got a black die available let's roll that because it's come out from my study i could have kept it in there it would have stayed unavailable but i could have got a silver very important you've got to pay your craftsman so that can come out there and then another Brighton, let's bring my yellow die, my orange die, into the ready section. Pretty good numbers as well, so far. And I can increase something by one. Well, let's, let's increase this by one. Because if we're going to put it in here and get it back next time, why not have it as a six? In case uh, I'm going to need that for something next time. So yeah, just place a die in my workshop, activated one of my things. And done a bit of brightening the bots turn so i start off as first player but that can change from uh, round to round we draw the top bot card and you can ignore all of the other bits for now this is only for when it tents which is not going to do until it's second to last card at the earliest this is a kind of decision a tiebreaker of things it will pick the actions are in the middle here it is going to try and do the top thing if it can't do the top thing for some reason, because it can't afford or there's nothing that's valid, it will move on and do the second thing instead. So this is a dice action. It wouldn't take a worker. It's just going to do the thing. Can it pay three silver to publish something? Well, it gets three silver at the start of a round. So yes. So it's going to pay that three silver. So if another one of its actions wants it to spend money, it's not going to be able to do that. And we'd move on to the next bit. So it wants to publish. That's what that uh, that quill symbol means. That's the publish uh, action. 
if it had a choice of things here in the build section, in the built inventions to publish, we would use this decision maker here. So it would choose the topmost thing because that's its uh, preference. It's got no choice though, because only one thing has been built yet. It's early days. So when it publishes things, it's spent its silver. We don't have to do its number focus because it's only got one choice over here. If I had invented this, then I would get a silver for someone publishing something that I'd built, I'd put some work into. The neutral player built this though, the imaginary setup player. So the silver would go to the supply, but we don't have to worry about that for the bot. Ignores that, of course. So you get a silver if you'd invent it. We place one of their influence on here. So the black influence is just to show that that was there in setup. Nobody really built that. Our bot has uh, published it, so it gets a little influence there. They're going to get some points at the end of the game now. They, of course, ignore the condition of the scoring. They haven't got a Chandler. Fortunate for them, right? Everyone needs a Chandler. They don't score based on that. They're just going to get a flat number of points for having published something. We slide it over here because this is an invention that has not just been invented. It's not just been built. It has now been published. It's like the, the, the final form of the inventions and move to the highest row of the next column. I did all of the bits. So it's done a bit of inventing there. That's what he does. So if it seems like there's like steps in there, it's just sort of remember all of the bits that the bot was doing. That is the bot's turn. Sometimes it will place a worker out on the board, but largely, can it do this? If it can, great. Use the tiebreakers to pick it. If it can't, it will gain some things and we'll probably be able to do stuff next time. And so it's back to me now. So it's published. I mean, I could have done that. It's a bit pricey using my scribe, but oh, we need to. I don't need to do anything with that, do I? You'll see these tiles flipping about and costs of things changing. So I was going to test. So to test something, and there's a little reminder on your player board here. I'm kind of losing a die. I'm going to try it out here, though. So you need to place any white die on a camel. Like, usually when you are building, inventing, publishing, numbers will matter for things. But right here, it doesn't matter. We just got to place a white die to do something. Is that right? I get that right? No, wait a minute. No, I don't. What am I talking about? Right. Reset that. I am losing my black die here, essentially. I'm sending my black die away to test for something and a very big plus on it. I am going to get a white die back for this because you will always have the same number of dice. Like when you get a new colored die into your supply, you have to get rid of a white die. The only time you get more is if you move far enough into these new river sections of the board over here. So yeah, I am going to lose my black die now, but I do get a die back to replace it. So I move exactly three spaces. There's three ships on this testing spot here. You can only test things that have been built or published. You can't be testing things that are just theoretical. Well, I suppose you could, but not here. So we move one, two, three spaces exactly. You'd skip over spaces that don't have bits in them. And we will get this workshop tile over here. And making spaces can be important because it's how we'll get to put research out, which can be ongoing abilities, powerful immediate things. They're the things that you can get by doing the worker spots up here. So I get a worker. Let's get me back to my board over here. And I get to put this tile anywhere in my workshop, kind of in the leftmost spot of a row. But I can decide if I choose to try and build evenly, so build in the leftmost column that's available, that's free. But I was on about trying to team these blue things up. If I want to do that, I have to pay a silver for every column that I'm essentially skipping over. So it is going to cost me one of my starting silver. Is this really the best thing to do? It's happening no matter what. So I'm going to put it here, paying a silver for skipping over here. And I get a little bonus from anything that was printed on the space that I'm covering up. I get to brighten a die. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm not like I'm pretty happy with the numbers that I've generally got. Things out here don't want like 
incredibly large numbers. I think I am just going to get a new die into the mix with a Brighton. So let's roll this because it's coming from the exhausted section. Yes, of course. After talking rubbish, there's a bit of lag on the display. So I get the new white die now. And I was, yeah, the, the blue, the blueness, I hope will really pay off here. Because I've got very high numbers as well, generally. Like, and if I'd started off with these low numbers, we could be, we could have been using the Brightons to move these all the way up here. Like once they're in the five section, like say I'd started as a one on my blue die, I'd probably have been keener to move this up and then I could give it a plus five if I wanted when I actually used it. And the benefit of uh, getting some extra influence when your colored dice go all the way up here. There is also the option, the question of free actions. We start off, or at least you do in solo, we start off with a couple of invention cards, and these can be used to increase dice, and they can refresh particular craft people that you've got. So I've got these craft people available, but as soon as I use them, they'll be face down, so I could discard them to improve dice that I need and to refresh people. Right, I've got on the camel. Thank you. Yeah, because I've done an action. The camel is like you've only got two of these things available. There is, however, a placement up here where we can rent a camel for the round. You get to brighten a die as well. It does cost you a worker placement action and an influence in each of the guilds, but you will be able to temporarily get an extra camel spot just for this round. We can get more later. Can you go over six? No. We are inventing, well, so far, I have to say, I haven't done any inventing yet. The, the setup, the imaginary setup player invented an automated saw and invented and built a tipping reed pen, which the bot has gone and uh, published. He's published his research on that tipping reed pen. But we're going to get in here. Don't worry about that. We've, we've, we've made some shakes on the river. We've done some sailing. Hi, Rach. Thank you. But I could potentially make a robotic bookshelf or a water-powered chair. We never know. Right. So I've done... No. Yes, I've done my turn now, haven't I? My turn was testing the thing. I did some sailing. I built my workshop. Now we can go for the bot, who is going to use a worker here, maybe. So they will place a worker if they can do their first choice of thing on a worker card. If they can't do this thing, they won't actually place the worker. They just get a thing instead. So can they spend an influence in each of the guilds? Yes, they can, because that's what they started with. Can they do that? They are going to gain a die and get a silver. Where I've put the pots. So they get a silver. When they gain a die, they are actually going to grab one of their dice cards and shuffle that in here so they're going to get an extra action this round. There's no decisions to be made over here. They're not going to be tenting yet. They've got plenty of cards left. And I think we're going to get this um, workshop active. Right. They've got an extra card in there, and that's their turn. They got a bit of silver. They got an extra turn, and they need to place a worker. Oh. One thing I haven't done, they did the top thing, they need to place a worker. Sometimes the thing they're doing is going to correspond to one of these guilds. Otherwise, the workers that they're placing are just going to block off one of these three spaces. Which one? They use their priority for it. They're going to block off the top one. No renting a camel for me this round, because they've blocked off that space. Back over, and I think that we could do, oh, we get a card as well. We'd be able to invent with a card. So we want to have at least 11 as the total in this workshop, and a blue die needs to be involved. So there's no need to spend more than that. We might as well just spend exact, and we can activate all of our bits here. So this one I got during the setup, and it just means that these dice here in this workshop, they're going to go back to the ready section instead of the exhausted section at the end of the round. This one here, you'll see on a few things, is 
increase our royalties. So over here is the royalties track, and it's going to determine, it can determine some points later on in the game. Largely, it's income that we'll get, it's royalties that we will earn at the start of rounds. See, while we're in this first section here, we get to brighten a die and get one silver. If we can really, really, really increase those royalties, we might be starting the round with five extra silver a time. As it is, we go from no royalties to a bit of royalties. And for going over this section over here, we can increase the level of one of our craft people. You see that this bonus disappears as we get uh, really into the royalties. So this is one of the ways we get to increase the level of our craft people. The main way, perhaps, is putting them to work, using them for things. So, who do we want to move up? Probably someone that's on the bottom row, because as soon as everybody has left this bottom row here, we get a bonus right away. This one is just refresh one of your craftspeople, but later on we could be getting royalties, we could be swapping dice. And this is our income. Royalties are on the board, we get income as well at the start of a round. You see, this just starts out as one silver, but that can be increased later on. And our tower will change it, it'll look all cool. So, which workers am I potentially going to be using and will level up just through use? Or we could look at the cards in my hand. If I'm going to invent something, building these inventions will require these workers. So maybe if I'm going to do these, that's all of those workers. So we might not want to invent that. So you could be thinking about what's available, what you might use, what we might want to score at the end. Although inventing it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have any hand in building or publishing it. So you, you don't have to be too concerned about what uh, the scoring conditions are for it. One thing you might really want to know is, when you're thinking about inventing stuff, is these symbols out here on the boards, these invention boards. I'm going to move this back down now that we... We know the sections, right? We want to see the invention boards. The invention boards here are all different. Of course, they've got different costs for inventing, but they've also got symbols that match up with the cards here. If you make a color match, then you get influence in that guild. So I might be thinking, well, I want to invent that. There's an invention already out here. Well, that's going to require my uh, carpenter and my tiler and my blacksmith. Well, yeah, if, if we think about perhaps building that, we could get some orange influence, and then orange influence is going to be important. That's not going to involve our weaver, though. So maybe one of the things we want to do is, let's level up the weaver. Because maybe we'll level these up through use and through doing things, and the weaver can just automatically level up with the bonus there. Yeah, because if, if we put these to use now in an action, then they will level up through experience, and then we can level up the tower. So. Although I'll have to say, that's the royalty bonus that I'm taking. And I haven't even had it all yet, have I? I get to refresh a craftsperson. If we're going to build that automated saw, let's refresh the blacksmith. Brilliant. We get two silver, so we might be able to afford to do it as well. All planned. And we get a new invention card, so we could be inventing a drum, which immediately, whatever it does, I want to do. So the, the end game scoring for these, of course, whenever it mentions a craft person, it's get them to a particular level in your tower. So get it getting a scribe to level six. They're starting the game at level four. Now it's not massive, massive, massive points necessarily. Oh, you can see all zoomed out. I don't know if it angles uh, got that bit. Oh, it has. If you do the green thing, it's worth two points. If you do the blue thing, so get someone to level nine, you get four points for it. If you built it, or in, if you built it or published it, if you built and published it, you get these scores twice. They say though, like when you're just thinking about things to invent, you might not necessarily have any input. Once it's invented and in the world, other people might swoop in first and get to build and publish it. But it's something we can be thinking about. Building a drum. I think I've had all of the benefits from my workshop. And it's time for the bot to step in and do something shorter. The bot is going to try and test stuff. It will be able to test stuff because there are spaces available over here. So let me just get my, remember all of the bits of when they're testing. So first of all, they are concerned about a color of dye they want to use. They want to use 
an orange die. So we're going to grab one of these from the supply. If there was nothing available, they would go to their next preference. But there is, if I move this to the side over here, there is a place where they could uh, do some testing with an orange die. So we get the die from the supply. I'll move this out of the way now because they're, they're doing their thing. We roll it. Oh, that's not the angle I wanted to show you. We roll it and place it out in here. Now, there is a bit that I didn't mention because I was the first person to do testing. You need to, when you're placing your testing die, you need to beat the numbers of any dice that are already on that board. As the first person, you could do what you like. And, you know, if we were playing multiplayer, I could really be blocking people off by placing that five to start. It just happened to be what my charcoal dice was. But, yeah, usually you need to beat other people's dice. As you might expect, the bot doesn't have to beat other people's dice. That is just a roll to maybe they're going to block you off. In this case, they rolled a one, so wouldn't have mattered. But they could potentially do this first roll a six, and it's going to be a lot tougher to uh, test over there. So yeah, do all of that stuff. If they cover up influence, so I might have gotten the big sail movement over here, but I didn't get any influence for doing it. They are placing on the orange, which is the shortest amount of sailing, but they are going to get an influence in the orange guild. Pop that there. And just like me, they are going to sail one space. Just like me, they are going to grab a workshop tile. But unlike me, they don't have a workshop, at least not one we're allowed to see. They have got some kind of um, Rube Goldberg machine making them do all of this stuff for free. And they are going to just stack their workshop tiles in a secret pile, and they're just going to get some points for every tile that they got at the end of the game. Yep, 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 yep. Move over there. Face down pile for scoring. We've got it. That's what they have done. They've done a little bit of testing there. And really, as I said, like going in there once, like, had they already published it, whether they had or not, if you are testing something that you have no involvement in yet, you're giving the other person points. So I'll say like this is uh, more of a job for later on in the game. You see these bits over here? If we're looking at published devices, if different people published and built the device, like in this case, all right, an imaginary setup player built it, the player that built it gets three points at the end of the game. The player who published it gets a point for every die that's on it. So I've given the bot a point in doing that. If the same person built and published it, they get one point for building it and a point for every die. But by building and publishing it, they get the scoring conditions on it twice. So they make up the points in that way, hopefully. And there's points available. Like if you just built it and it never got published, you still get a point for every die that's on it if it's in the built stage. And you'll get the scoring conditions on it. That's later though. Right. He's tested, hasn't he? And I have uh, I have run out of my planning. Shall we try and do some inventing? Maybe that's what we'll do with our other camel action. So to... Oh, we'd, we'd do building, wouldn't we, if we're going to do this saw? Because the, the right workers have come along quite nicely. So it might not be a terrible thing. We could still try and you know invent the robotic chair, but I wouldn't be able to build it in this round, because I've got no more camel space, and the place where I can get more camel space has been taken from me. So I think let's let's try building something. So if we look over here, the actual, pressing the button that takes me, if we look over here, <laughs> it's going to tell us the costs of building this automated saw. We're going to have to place dice on our camels equal to six or more. With these high numbers, I can just place one die. We are going to have to pay and uh, employ these workers. I think we can do that. So for a lot of the actions, apart from testing, which is its own thing, and we've seen it, all of these other things are going to concern costs in the top right and rewards in the bottom left. Those costs and rewards, though, will change. Because if you are just trying to invent something, you're going to have to place dice of a certain value and discard a certain amount of cards and get royalties. Then you're going to place one of your invention tiles, which has happened thanks to the mystical setup player. You're going to pay these costs instead that are defined by the invention card itself. 
and you're going to get these rewards that are determined by the tile that the inventing player put down. Then it'll move over here, and this tile gets flipped up. I could show you this by actually doing it. This tile gets flipped up, and this cost's always the same. So the person who wants to publish has to pay the inventor a silver, employ their scribe, and any other craft person. And that's the same on the other side of all of the invention tiles. This side, for actually building it, is different. Right, so let's do that. So I just need to place a die on a camel. I've got a six, so I can save the use of some of my dice. And we are going to have to employ the carpenter, the tiler, and the blacksmith. So the cost of all of these workers is just one silver each at the moment, because they are low down in my tower. There is an extra use of your workers though. So I just need these, I need to pay them somehow, and then they will move up the tower and exhaust. They're going to have to be refreshed somehow. What you can do though is turn over, exhaust, craft people that you don't need to get a discount of a silver per exhaustee for the action that you're doing. So you can do things that you can't quite afford if you're prepared to make your workers a bit more tired and perhaps more unavailable. You, there are many ways, many little benefits all over the place of getting to refresh your craftspeople. You have discarding the cards, there's rewards out here, there's um, refreshing the tower bonuses to do it. But there is an action out here that has been made more expensive this round. This one is get an invention card and refresh all of your craftspeople. So if you can time it right and someone doesn't nick that action from you, you can potentially get big discounts on stuff, do big inventions, and then refresh them all in one great big go. As it stands, I have got three silver, so I think I'm just going to pay the money. So I need to employ my blacksmith, move them up, exhaust them, my carpenter, move them up, exhaust them, and tiler, and it has happened. It's been foretold, and level one of my craft person tower has been emptied. And so we look at the black bar that's been made up here. There are zero people in there. So we look here and I get to refresh something. So if kind of thinking of other inventions, I can see that the tiler is on all of my invention cards. Nobody else has invented something, so I can't get an idea from that. You need your scribe to publish built things and they're already refreshed. So I think I'm just going to go for the tiler. Refresh them. And it's got a little arrow over here that tells me the magic. I'm excited about this. You get to flip that tower tile and suddenly it says floor six. What are you talking about? The tower moves on, moves ever onwards up to the skies. And you can see more income rewards, more clearing it out rewards that you might get. And how progressively more and more and more expensive activating anybody is going to be as we go further in the game. So I've paid all of my costs, it's time to get some rewards, and the rewards in this case are going to be two influence in the Orange Guild. So, oh, maybe I'll put some research out. <gasps> That's an idea. Oh, it's totally the plan. So that moves into the build section, and there is a little um, player aid to make sure you're doing all of this bit right. Pay the crafts people, yes. Resolve the build effect, just done it. Flip the invention tar over here, so now the cost to publish it is going to alter. Move the device board, place your influence. I've done all of the bits. Oh, and there is. Yeah, that wouldn't have helped me in this case. And I, I haven't used any of them yet, but it's worth me mentioning there are bonuses to be had for using particular dice on your camels to do these actions. There are bonuses. If you do the invent action, and there is an orange die involved, then you get to draw an invention card. If you do the build like I had just done, but I'd used a charcoal die to do it, maybe instead of spending it testing and stuff, uh, then I could refresh a craft person. No such bonus for testing. For publishing though, if you use a blue die to do it, you get to brighten one of your dice as well. So a little extra if you use particular dice to do particular things. So, oh, they will go up and we need a new invention board out. So that's a new space that we can invent things from. And you see over here, you 
pressing the wrong button every time. Why have I put it in that position? <laughs> Over here, you need to spend a high dice value to make an invention, but you only got to discard one card. So potentially, you could do that right from the start of the game when uh, you start the solo game, at least, with um, two invention cards. I haven't placed it. Thank you. I haven't placed my influence on the build spot to show that... Now, I'm, I'm in here. I want to try and have influence in the orange guild by the end of the game. If I've got four in there, I will get two points. If I've got seven in there, I'll get an extra four points. If I've got seven in there, there's a decent chance I would uh, have majority in there as well for another five points. We'll see how that goes. If I can publish it as well, then I would double that. So I'd really want to go for orange influence, which I could potentially get through um, inventions, but the invention boards aren't really working with me on that. Although the drum, that would match up with an orange and a blue. Something to think about, but we're not going to get to do that this round because my camels are full for the day. So, but what are you up to? You are going to do some inventing and getting silver. Well, I've got a feeling that we're in desperate need of some inventing. So, they're using their number focus over here to pick a device. So they're going to pick the bottom device, the, the bottom invention board. So down here, they're going to make a luminous and then we draw the top card from the device deck. Let me press the wrong button again. All we're looking for is one influence match. As long as there is one, a gray, yeah, gray to gray, that's okay. If there were no color matches, we would discard and draw another card until they've got at least one. They could potentially get three if they're dead lucky. But over here, they've got an influence match. They have invented the luminous clock. And they are going to get one influence in the Grey Guild for that invention. They love luminous things. That goes over there. They are going to place an invention tile on it. This happens when I would invent things as well. They've just got their shuffled up in a stack. And they're only going to... They can only invent six things over the course of the game. So that tells you... A little bonus. If, if I was to build the luminous clock, it's going to take a high dice value to do it. And it's just off the board, actually, isn't it? My uh, Marty's in the way. So if I was to build this, I would get the bonus of a new coloured die in my study. Right. They've done all of the bits. Draw till as a match. They get an influence per match. That's it. I've given their silver already. I think I should have a drink. Sorry if I'm missing chat and stuff. I'm trying to, not to miss bits of the game. Hopefully I haven't yet. Hopefully, we've got some kind of strategy going on. Now, as I said, at any point here, so it's back to me, I've still got dice to use, I've still got an open workshop, I've still got workers I can place, and I think I'm going to get some... I think I'm going to place at least one worker. But I can tent at any point in here, and it kind of stops some stuff. But I'll explain. Just, I might use all of my stuff, and it might be ages until that happens. So there are five end of round bonuses that you can get. You'll place your tent on one of them. And this over here, level up two of your craft people. Get a new color die and brighten twice. Royalties, we could just really go for royalties. So you get a benefit kind of right away, whether something that's on the tile and there are loads of these shuffled up and uh, picked at the start of the game. They will move up at the end. First person in each of these will get an influence in one of the guilds and Every tent in these places at the end of the game is worth two influence in a respective guild. So that's something to think about. But also going here, you can get the envoy who is an extra worker for the next round. And that extra worker has to pay one fewer influence for any of the things that uh, they do. Or over here, you could come over and at the end of round, you get to rent a camel next time. You don't even have to worry about whether that space is available or not. When you tent, you can, for every camel and or worker that was free, you can refresh a craft person and brighten a die. And the round isn't over for you. It's not completely saying you're out of it because you can still place dice in a workshop. You can still brighten a die, refresh a craft person, or use a craft person to empty a workshop so you could potentially use it again. So this is like every time it comes back to you, you get one of these options. So you might have You've not essentially passed. You've tented, but you are still in it, and you can do any of these things when it comes back round to you. Same thing for the bot. He's going to get to tent at some point, and 
every time it comes back to him, he just gets a silver, which is scary because silver lets him do powerful things and they're worth a point each to him at the end of the game. I think it's every four is a point for us at the end. I could test my sword, I could. Hey, Harry Cobb, what, how's it going? Yeah, those beige lovers. I've injected some blue and stuff in. Right. It's me, isn't it? I've just done all that waffle in case I do that. So yeah, Marcus, I've got an orange die, and that's a lot of ship movement. But it's no influence again. But I'm in on this. That's worth an extra die to me. Although if Bot swoops in and publishes it, then they would get the points for the dice instead of me. But maybe we'll just have to think about uh, publishing it next time. Now three... Ooh. I was actually going to do something else. But that's... Very good point, Lynette. And that has made things a lot easier for me because um, I can't test because my camels are full. But maybe a priority for next time. Because if I move... One, two, three would put me exactly here. You can't move past these kind of beacons. You have to stop at them. So if, even if you get loads of movement, that would be exactly three. You get to clear out a workshop and you get a new white die. So that's the only way that you can increase the number of dice you have. I think, do we start at 11? And the only way to increase it is you get a new white die here and you get a new uh, colored die over here. And then you reveal all of this stuff and we can get more. Ooh, that's nice. But yes, what I was going to do was do some research. Silently gets research section of notes up to make sure he does it right. Where I put research? Oh, it's under the heading research, surprisingly. So, with any of these worker placement actions up here, as I said earlier when I was just brushing over it all, they've all got their different influence costs of the guilds, and they've all got different options here. Add a certain, add the guild's colour of dye to your study, and either level up your people. So I could just really focus on, oh, and every time I tent, try and move the workers up, keep doing the blue influence action, get blue dice and then pump the workers up. I, I said I wanted to invent things, but I, I want to see level 10. I've, like I say, I've, I've done some focusing of leveling up the craft people. I've never got them to 10. So yeah, you can do those things, or orange die, three invention cards, charcoal die, get your royalty bonus again, and a silver. So you can choose that option, or you can choose the left option, the mystery option, and that is research. So that involves these tiles here on the open seas, and you get to put them in an open spot. You'll get influence for being the person that made it happen. You'll get, um, oh, you get to place an influence, which is going to give you points at the end of the game. The person that did the research and put that tile down gets three points, and an ongoing ability for the rest of the game. Once we get into this section, these research tiles are an ability every time you tent, and over on the right side of the river, these are immediate abilities. So, I, wanna, I want to research. And later on, this isn't going to happen in our game, because I think whenever the bot researches, they always put a new one out. But later on in the game, you could, when you did a research action, choose to either put a new one down yourself. There has to be empty spaces to be able to do that. But when you research in the future, if somebody else has already researched and you really like that ability, one person can piggyback off it. They only get one point for it at the end, but they get access to the ability. So I want to research, and I was thinking at first, I've got this orange influence here. I could, I could pay activate a worker to do it but i'm now thinking maybe i really need to save that orange influence to try and do my scoring thing maybe we'll pivot away from that later on i could do any of them so the costs over here i've only got one blue influence so it would be a blue influence and a silver i don't have a silver but i can always exhaust one of my craftspeople to provide that silver the only thing about um, flipping craftspeople for silver, you can't use the same craftsperson more than once for an action. So 
if I was like getting a discount with the blacksmith and I also needed the blacksmith to do the building that I was doing, you can't do that. You've got to do other people because you might have, I might have loads of cards that refresh the blacksmith, but just once per turn for, for what they're doing. So yeah, a blue influence and a silver. One orange influence, I have got three, and activate a craftsperson. So you've got to pay and they'll move up and all of that good stuff. Or we could just do two charcoal influence and not pay anything, still have them active. And with I was thinking, wasn't I, of inventing something over here, which would get me, oh, orange and blue, not charcoal. For these actions over here, it's nice to have one of everything. So you've got access to those things. Hmm. I am going to go. So I've got no invention cards with charcoal at the top. That's the only way I could get more charcoal influence. Well, get a charcoal die up here. There are ways. But I'm thinking like immediate ways of doing it. Just if I'm activating a person, I've got to activate them and pay the money for them. So that would be two people used up. Let's do blue. So place me worker. One blue influence, because that's all I've got. So that's pet that's exhausted, that's spent, gone. And I've got to pay a silver. We did say Tyler is on everything. So I'm going to exhaust my weaver to pay that cost. Just exhausting one gets you like a, a one silver discount. And we get to do some research. Oh yeah, my middle row. There's always my middle row. If I was desperate for influence. Do you know what? You've changed my mind. I'm going to leave them active. And instead of paying the blue and the coin, I'm going to go and pay two black. Because I can always get it back if I was desperate for it. And then I don't have to exhaust anybody or pay any silver and stuff. Thank you. So, what's researching? Well, I've explained a lot of the bits, haven't I? What, are the actual, what do we actually do for it? So, you grab three tiles, and we're going to get to pick one of these to place in a spot. You do have to pay. It has to be an empty space, and you have to pay a silver for every space that's in front of your ship that you're skipping. Luckily, we're, we're doing well on the river here. Uh, so we draw three of them. I need to put my influence down as well. So let's look at the the things that we can get here. Put my influence down while I'm remembering. So we're three points as well doing that. And we've now got an ability forever. So flips to the page to make sure he's saying the right thing. But generally, when thing on the top happens, thing on the bottom happens. So over here and... A lot of the symbols you, you'll recognize from, if you're familiar with Garfield games, that you know, a lot of these symbols crop up a lot. You'll, uh, you'll quickly put together what all of the bits do. So at the end of a round, colored dice on camels go back to ready instead of exhausted. Wouldn't help me right now, but in the future, oh, you want to be using your colored dice on camels to get the bonuses. So they would come back ready. That's quite nice. Uh, whatever total you are using on your camels is increased by two. And over here, whenever you gain a blue die, you also get an invention card and a coin, which is nice. And the only thing stopping me is that it's not going to help me right now. Ooh, either of those will be great. I think I'm not going to take that. The ones you don't take just go to the bottom of the pile. It would incentivize you more to use colored dice out here. Although, having said that, I'm about to use my only other colored die right now to test, which isn't going to have that effect. But what if their value was plus two? Make it easier to do a lot of the things. Just I'm going to have a lot more exhausted dice. We will cross that bridge when we come to it. I'm going for my camel total is going to be increased by two. The ones I didn't pick go to the bottom, I believe. And I've done my research. I think I've got all of the bits. Yeah, so these are all like ongoing things. So whenever that happens for the rest of the game now, I'm going to get that benefit. 
These are things that happen when you tent. These are big things that just happen once when you do it. Okay, so that's it, isn't it, for the thing that I did. I placed a worker and it made all that stuff happen. Bot, can they pay three silver to do a build? No, they've got two silver. So can they invent? Yes, they're going to invent them. So their priority is using the top invention board, which is empty. So that's them deciding what they're doing. And we just need to find a card that's going to give them an influence match. It does. It's just one out here. They're going to get a blue influence for matching those colors. And they have invented the robotic goblet. And yeah, that's, that's all there is to say about that. Oh, they, they place an invention tile as well. That's what you will get from doing that. The bot, of course, in their tradition of ignoring things, they, they're not bothered about royalties. They get plenty of income, and we don't get to know about it. Right. That was the bot doing things. It's time for me to do things. So I'm saving this orange for something, I imagine. We might as well save it for next time to do testing, haven't we? It's going to be ready. It even gets elevated, wouldn't it, by next time? So I've got another worker I could place, or if I don't place them, I can refresh a craftsperson and brighten the die when I tent. Although what could I do? I could first go to the workshop, get an influence, then do one of these actions, but I don't think I particularly want to. I mean, I have still got blue influence. I could still go over with my worker, spend me blue influence, spend a silver, I could do another research. Should I do that? I must research the leftmost spot on the river. I've just read in my notes. The leftmost empty spot. I mean, it would also stop them from doing it. And it would give me another ability for the rest of the game going to be a bit short on influence. But that feels good to me. I don't usually get two things. Hmm. Yeah, let's exhaust my weaver now then. I was going to last time. Take my influence from there, but let's research again. While the getting's good, let's see what other ability we can have out of here. There's no limit that I'm missing, is there, that you can only have one in each section? If there is, I haven't written it down. Ooh. When you get royalties, brighten the die. When you research, we do what we're doing now, get a silver. When you get a workshop tile, brighten the die. Now, I mean, you get royalties for publishing or inventing and our workshop thing. So um, like we're, we're pretty much guaranteed that that will happen at least once around. And hopefully, I will get to make it happen more than that. And especially if we're going to end up with all exhausted dice because I didn't take the make them ready option. Maybe that's some extra brightening that can come in. I'm pleased with that. Okay, the bot. We are into their last two cards here. They might tent. If they don't, they will tent next time and we ignore what's on their card here. So they're... Yeah. So this second to last card if they do the top bit, then we carry on, they will tent next time. If they do the bottom bit, they tent now, as well as doing this action. So first of all, can they spend four silver to build or publish? No, they've got two. So they're going to be tenting. They're tenting first. Where are they going to go? They are just going to get an influence in charcoal and a silver. and. So that was their second to last card, and they chose the bottom bit of it. So we do all the stuff on it, then we reveal this card, and we just care about the tenting bit, which the only thing that's changed is this is happening a round early, well, a turn early. If they had revealed this card, we would still be ignoring the bits on it and just do the tent thing. So the brown icon is going to show where they want to put their tent. They're putting it there. They, of course, don't care about the benefits that a player would normally get. The white tent shows us if they are the first player to tent, which they are, 
where they are going to put the dummy player's tent, blocking off an extra space. And if I'd tented first, I would have got to choose where that went. So we're not going to be able to go there. If we tent now, the round is going to be over. If we carry on and the game goes back to them, they will get a silver every turn that that happens. So what would I want to do? I've got no workers left. The only thing I could do with dice is level up a worker or get an influence. I'm leaning to tent. So thinking about tenting. Oh, another one thing I didn't mention about tenting is that we also uncover a bonus from here. And the first bonus in this case, these little overlays are for the player count. At our player count, we get access to our next camel. Now, so round two onwards, you've got an extra camel to be dealing with, potentially all four camels if you hire one. So player order is determined by the order in which you tented as well. So for being in the leftmost tent, which he's guaranteed himself, he is going to be first player next time. There's nothing we can do about that. So we can be thinking about the bonus we'd get right away, because this one over here, mm, I wish it was in the orange tent. So this one over here, get royalties right now and brighten a die. And when I get royalties, I brighten another die. So that's made better straight away. Can't pick this one. I like the idea of leveling up two craftspeople. It's also making them more expensive because I would get potentially four camel actions next round. This one over here, two silver and two brightons, is nice. But the thing I like about it most is, so we would get to move up here. And the first person to move into those sections gets an influence of that respective guild. So I would get myself an orange influence, which I do want for the end game stuff. But also every tent here at the end of the game counts as two orange influence. So whether I keep this or spend this throughout the course of the game, I could be building up orange influence, which I know is worth points by just tenting in that space. So yeah, it is between, oof, all of them are good in their ways. Four camel options is great, just having more actions, although we could potentially do the worker action out here if it's available. And not made more expensive. I think he always just makes something more expensive out here and blocks off two down here. I'm leaning a bit more towards royalties, not just because of that bonus, but also we're about to get royalties and that's an extra silver to be able to do the things in the next round. And I've got no influence in charcoal. It's probably going to be useful to have some. I think that's where I'm going. So I get royalties. There's no bonus from going one to two, but then we get to brighten things. This is before like other stuff comes up. We should use, could also use the brighten to move up the orange die, which will then move up. Oh, perfect points. So yeah, I was thinking with, with my brightens, I've got a, a few dice already actually ready to use next time. But yeah, my if I use my brighten up here, it increases the values of the dice, which you know, is a four. I don't necessarily need that much. But as we'll see in a minute, at the end of the round, all of your dice brighten. And when colored dice brighten to um, inspired, right? Yes, uh, you get an influence of that color. So that could also boost me back into the orange. I'd have an orange influence as well. Brilliant. Right, let's, uh, let's get me tenting steps proper. So I used all of my camels and workers. No bonuses from that. Resolve the effect of the past tile. I have had a royalty there. I'm going to brighten the yellow die. And let's also brighten mm, to first. Because these are going to get brightened anyway. And this is a three. Could just brighten so that it's um, higher up. Let's, let's, just, let's just have another one available for they're going to come from exhausted to ready anyway, though. It's a one, so we'll probably be glad that it's uh, getting brightened a bit. So that's me two brightens. I've had the past tile effect. Resolve any tent. Oh, that's what I mean by middle tent abilities. If you had abilities here, they would kick off when you tented. Resolve the tent revealed. 
I get a camel uncovered. And the if you were doing the dummy player, they would get to place tents. We have both tented, so the round is over. And there's a little reminder here of the steps that will now happen. So first of all, the leftmost tent gets the first player. So that is going to be the bot now gets the first player. And there is also printed on the first player marker, when we are doing the start of round stuff, as well as the royalties and the income, in a three or four player game, you'd also get a, um, a invention card. We're just in the solar. Right, so they're getting first player. Brighten all unused dice. So you go up here, I get an orange influence, which is what I really want. You weren't used and get brightened. And then, yeah, and then you become available, don't you? The things that were exhausted are now not exhausted and get rolled. Lower numbers this time, but we still got some very decent numbers that are, can be boosted further. Use dice, get, so I'll get this out of the way for a second. Use dice, get exhausted, so it doesn't matter what their numbers were. But remember, we've got the ability at the end of the day, the dice that were placed here go to the ready section. So they don't stay, oh yeah, maybe increasing this was a waste because they don't stay with these numbers, do they? They get re-rolled. Because we, we don't have to have the step of them going exhausted, but yeah, they, uh, they're going to change their values. So there we go. Exhaust all used dice. Return hired camels. You've got to do that every round to get access to this. Retrieve your workers. So there are mine. I do have a third worker available up at the top, and we get them at the end of round two. Retrieve workers and raise your tents. So you would just go up there. The bot actually, if they hire a camel or get the extra worker, they get extra cards in their deck for next time. So raise them up there. The first person up here gets a blue influence, so that's the bot. The first person up here gets a charcoal influence, and that's me. We've got some decent influence going over here. And remember, tents here. His tent is considered two blue influence for the end game scoring, and my tent here is considered two charcoal influence for the end game majority scoring. Right. So there is a little bit of extra admin to do at the end of round because the bot needs some stuff doing. So all the cards that they used this time, we just need to put them back in their piles, worker or dice, and shuffle the piles up so they'll you know, use different things. Oh yeah, we need to use the dummy tent every time. It was fun seeing it raise though, wasn't it? Next, we only need one. If I give these a shuffle, and then for the start of round, oh, they're going to start with six silver. They get three, and we need to make their round two stuff. They didn't take anything that alters this um, configuration, so they're going to get five dice, two worker cards, or five dice, two worker, and they get shuffled up. And while I'm doing that, we can have a look at what the dummy player is doing. The dummy player is introducing two influence to black, one to orange, competing with us for the majorities. They are moving one, two, three, four spaces along, and they don't reveal new things, do they? And I need, they are making hiring a camel cost an extra orange influence, and they are blocking off a couple of spots on the guilds, and that's the dummy player dealt with. And that's pretty much it. We've, we've got to get our start around stuff this time. So, and they're going to go first. I don't know if what they're going to do is going to influence what we do. I would like to get that published just so we could get it twice. If we're really going to go for Orange Influence, probably want to start passing here. I wish those pass tiles were swapped a bit. Wish that was a immediate effect. So start of round stuff. It's royalties and income. So 
royalties, we get to brighten a die, and we get two silver. Which is my only two silver. And brighten the die. Well, we could brighten, it's so low, we could brighten the blue, so now it could be used for plus one. And if we get another brighten ability, which we probably will, we could put it to the top, we could use it for plus five, and we'd get a blue influence. So I think that's worth doing. Especially since we've got nothing in the study right now. Okay, so that's the Brighton. I've had the two silver. And then over on the player board, we also get some income over here. So we get a third silver. And we can increase the level of somebody. So probably someone lower down. Let's see. Carpenter's used quite a bit. Chandler's used... All of them are used in a nice mix. I can't see... I can see Weaver on the chair. But nowhere else. I'm going to move the Weaver up. Move the Weaver up, have a silver and hopefully we can keep improving that so it will change up. And it's the bot's turn, isn't it? Maybe want to get a test in as soon as we can, just in case he decides to test. And well, if he publishes it, he's going to get points for those dice. It's just the way of it. That's not the deck of cards I wanted to draw from. This is. He's going to build something. OK, that's OK. So can he pay three coins to build? Yes, he's got six of them. And he has got the choice, actually. His first choice is the top, though, so that's what he's going to do. So Bill spent his silver. He's used his number focus. We need to move the invention tile. It wasn't my invention, so I... Oh, yeah, the, something to think about these invention tiles. If you build it, you get the effect, but also the inventor gets that effect, too. In a bot game, you don't care what was on that invention tile. It's just the only thing that would matter when the bot is building something, if you invented it, you would now get uh, that benefit. So it goes out there, we get the effect, place their influence and move to the highest row in the built section. There we go. They slide up and we get a new potential invention tile. Horse powered. <gasps> I want the horse powered bookshelf. What if we can win based on deftest things we can invent? Right. So, do we publish first, and then I bet he's going to test, and he's going to choose orange, and it's all going to be that, or do we publish, do we test first, and then he's going to publish it, isn't he? Let's see, we would need an eight, so I only need to place, actually, a six on a camel, and it would get treated as an eight. I could do it with one die. Apart from I haven't rolled any sixes. I could just turn one of these fours up or this five up by discarding one of the invention cards. That's always a free action. And it would refresh someone. Might hold back the inventing because all of that needs me to discard two things. But we'll get more cards. I'm leaning towards publish. We have to pay a silver to the supply because the... the setup player did it. The orange. Oh, I don't want to use my orange though. I want to use my orange to test. Whatever I pick, I bet he's going to do the other thing afterwards. I have got a blue die. If he tests on the orange, I could test on the blue and still get three movement and it still work out. So I think, I'm a, I think I want to publish and double this up. So I'd have to pay a silver to the supply because the setup player invented it. I would have to pay my scribe, which is two silver. And then I would have to pay somebody else. I've only got my Tyler available, but if we're doing this to increase a die number, that is going to, one of these will turn the carpenter right way around. Let's, let's discard the chair. So the chair's got on it in the, the bottom right corner here. Sorry, the chair is not going to be invented. We can, oh yeah, actually it's more important that the blue goes in the workshop. So yeah, bot, please don't, please don't test. We're going to refresh the carpenter and increase the value of a die. Doesn't really matter, both, they'll both have the same effect. Five up here because it can be used as plus one. 
So discard that for that bonus. Not left room for a discard pile anywhere. And that means with a single six, because it's in plus one, we can treat it as being one higher. The camel can be treated as if it was two higher. And this needs an eight. So that's great. Silver to the supply. Two silver pays my scribe. They move up and are now inactive. And then we will put the... Tile is used for everything. Carpet is used for two out of the three things. We will move the carpenter up. We will use the carpenter, who costs a silver to use. Haven't got that silver there. I'm going to have to flip my tiler down. Everybody is inactive right now. But my carpenter's gone up, so that's okay. Let me get all of me... Oh, actually, we don't need... Uh notes for publishing do we pay craft people increase your royalties cost in the top right rewards in the bottom left so this has now been published i get royalties for that which is going to have ramifications place your influence i get royalties i can level somebody up and brighten a die so we want to brighten blue because that's going to give us a blue influence, and now that can be a six, which will help for getting the high numbers out here. And we can level somebody up. Tyler's used on a lot of things. Chandler is used on all of these things, though, as well. So either one of them. I want to level someone up from the bottom so that um, we can get this clear, we can get another die in. It'll all be great. Okay. Royalties happened. That was good. So... Have I had all of the bits? Pay craft people, increase royalties, move device board, place influence. Done. I think. Yeah. <laughs> now that everybody is completely exhausted, there is no extra cost to it this time. I have got an influence in each of the guilds. A worker and an influence on each. And refresh all those people and get a card. But I am a bit worried about getting the testing done. I would really like three movement just to get straight to... Because you have to stop here. It would be nice to get extra tiles. Ugh, it would all be great. Right. What am I doing? Bot's doing something. Shut me up, Bot, and do an action. He's building something. Well, there's only one thing to build. Three silver. Yep, he's got that. So he's going to pay that. He can use his priorities all he likes, but there is only one... Thing invented right now. So he is going to be building his own invention, the Luminous Clock. Get his uh, bits right. So he spent his silver. He's used his number focus. Turn over the invention tile. So if we're building stuff though now, he's going to be getting... Um... Yeah, we have to be worried about two things now. There's a worker spot I don't want him to take, and there's a testing spot that I don't want him to take. But... I think we're a bit safer now because if he was to test and happen to pick orange, the number focus would tell him which row to choose, but he would go for the leftmost thing. So he wouldn't pick this. If he, if he did happen to choose orange, whichever, and, and he got row number two, he would go here first, wouldn't he? Because it's leftmost. So I think we do work next. Right. Really much tile. It, I didn't invent it, so I don't get an effect. Place their influence, put it in the column. And a tease of a future invention may well be the folding. Maybe the folding bookshelf. So yeah, I think we need to do worker action. Worker action. Influence of each. Sorry, orange. I will get more. Influence in each. Spent. Get a device card. We might be inventing the wheel at last. And all of the craft people refresh, which is going to be great. Like for, even just for inventing. I'm going to test though, aren't we? It's going to be great. Right. That's my action then, doing a worker. Bot is doing a dice. Can he spend three silver? Oh, the ghostly image of Rachel Pierce. Hiya. You headless for a sec there. I am only one round in, but... That first round had all the explanation, so... So you would like to have a drink? Yes, please. <laughs> I'm making decisions for a change. 
Well, I'm, get, I'm getting help. Thank you. Right. Where was I? I refreshed all of the bits. The bot was having a turn. Yes. They can't pay through. They've got no money. They are going to get an orange influence and a orange and one silver. Okay. And back to me. So, yeah, I want the testing, but on the other hand, oh, yeah, there's water power, don't there? Water will. Ooh, I've just thought doing the testing clears out a workshop, doesn't it? So wouldn't it be worth using the workshop up top, getting it cleared out with this effect when we test, doing some brightening to get those blue dice back, and doing it again in one round? And then maybe more if we tent it early, but it doesn't sound like we're going to tent early. So first, I want to use the workshop. I want an 11 involving blues. This can already be a 6, because it's inspired. So that's fine, and we've got a 5 available. It's just what numbers it rolls might determine whether we'll be able to do this again. Oh, the downside of that is... You'd refresh a person, and you've just refreshed them all. So, taking another step back, do you want to invent... Oh. Inventing doesn't use workers. Do you want to build another thing? Although the downside of that would be potentially removing an option for him testing. Hmm. If there was something that cost money that I could exhaust someone for, not really. Maybe we just do it, because we're going to get to do it twice. Maybe that's still worth doing, even if we're wasting one readier craft person ability. Oh, the other thing on the corner of the cards is uh, brighten a die, and up your dice by one. Yeah, because he's built the stuff, if there was an invention ready, Unless we're willing to delay it by a load of actions, and then we could invent something. We need a six to invent something, but we can use two dice to do it. Invent something this turn, build it next turn, then we do the workshop. Then you wouldn't have a camel ready for testing. Just do the workshop. Stick with the plan. We will just not refresh a worker and not be quite as efficient as we might like to be. So, we get a card. I know it's eight, but we are fine. We have got a boat, a water-powered boat, two silver. True. <laughs> True, Chef. Who are you employing all of these? What are you employing all of these people with? Thinking, uh, the people have got expensive, actually. Even like early on, it's quite easy to oh well I can I can exhaust half of them to pay for the other half. But as soon as they're getting higher up, we need some economy. We'll just waste that little bonus. I think is good for now. They're gonna come back ready, but we're hopefully gonna drag them back with this ability. We get a royalty, which means we get to brighten something. Ooh. I'm kind of thinking put the one up so it could potentially be a six or we get more dice available to do stuff with. Because what are we going to want? You will get cleared out, but you'll go exhausted because it's not the end of the day. We're going to want two to do it again. We're spending that to test, so that's okay. And we'll probably try and invent. And that needs like at least a six. Now, if I don't use the one, it'll go up anyway. Let's brighten a normal dice. I'm getting to brighten because I'm getting a royalty. And that's the other. A six. Right. We've done all of the bits. Reactivated a workshop for our turn. Bot can now step in. Do they have two charcoal influence? They do indeed. Oh, no. But they cannot research. There is no space to do any researching. So, can they test? Yes. So, colour focus, they're going for... They're doing it as well. They're... 
thankfully there is something in the way. So color focus, can they place orange for testing? Yes. Then number preference for row, they're gonna go for the middle row is their number one preference. Uh, and if there is more than one spot, go for the leftmost. That's the only thing that's saving us here. And so they're popping a two in there. They are gonna get an orange influence for this, which now we're neck and neck. Let it spend one. And oh, I'm panicking like I've got a decision to make. They're doing it. Uh, and take it off and spy, roll it. They got an influence and they need to move their ship, don't they? That many spaces. They're getting a tile for their secret workshop. And in future, they could now wear. Uh, hey, green screen secrets peeling back the curtain. It's a bit of green card. No, it's high tech stuff. So, yeah, someone could reset it. That could be me swooping in, but I would be using my orange influence. It's the only place I've got influence if I wanted to research. I've got two abilities. We could have all of the abilities. Right, that's all of their stuff, isn't it? Let's test. So testing. It doesn't matter what number's used. I could bump it up to make it, but it would only make it harder for me, wouldn't it? Because he can do it no matter what. So there's no point bumping it up. There are no dice on there, so I can do anything. Four dice, get a white die from the supply, and put it on the camel. Am I doing all of the bits of testing? Make sure you're doing them all. No, that says tenting. <laughs> die on the camel. A colored die on the device. Must be bigger or greater. Gain influence? No, because I've gone for the big shift movement again. But we have landed on space where we'd have to stop anyway. I really like that that's happened. There's been games where I've been here. And I'm like, oh, well, the only dice color I've got would get me three movement. It would be wasted, and I'm not being that inefficient. But now we can go here and stop. We reveal the tiles that are here, the new workshop tiles that are available. And these are just from a big supply. There are more that I haven't made it to the game, partly because you see in games with higher player counts, there would be multiple tiles stacked on top of each other. As there are on the end here, you can't quite see from bird's eye, but there are two tiles on these end piles and loads here. So we reveal those so we know what's available here. And there are some tiles like, oh. That, that one's blue as well. Use employ your blacksmith to move your ship into the space. That might help us get in like, to the end, and then you can get workshop tiles from here as well, or choose from any that are back here, or get two silver. Right, we have activated this section of the river. I'm not used to being the person that does this. It's usually uh, the bot rocket in ahead. We can clear a workshop. So they go exhausted, don't they, if, they, if we're clearing them. Yeah, they get exhausted, so we got to get them used, got to get them back somehow so we can get them back for free and, and just use the thing. We need an 11, though. Could be a big ask. And we get a white die in our ready section. We've increased the dice available to us. I mean, we've got a white six there, so we just got to get the blue in a position to be a five. We've got cards. We've hopefully got Brightons somewhere. There's a couple of Brightons there. There's a couple of Brightons there. Hopefully we can do it. What am I doing? I'm testing. Yes. So I've done all of that stuff. I've finished testing. Right. Oh, he's getting in on some inventing. He wants to invent in the middle here. He is going to invent the horse-powered... Is there at least a match? Yes. The horse-powered lens. There are two matches there for him. Unfortunately for us, he gets one in blue, he gets one in yellow. Oh, orange. I was thinking yellow's fine. No, that's orange where we want. It's dominating the influence, but maybe I'll spend it. They'll probably get uh, good effects for that. I have to read bot notes. Those are working out better than usual. Usually my notes are more of a mess than my head. Uh, so yeah, usually I'm a pretty quick dice. Yep, that's all he does. Oh, and he... No, 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 it's not. You're missing a bit from your special notes. You need to put an uh, invention tile on it. He's inventing all of the things. I tend to end up letting him do that. I always say, I'm, I'm going to invent stuff this time. And then I just leave it all to him. It'll sound all right, by the way. I assume I'm audible because we've been chatting. But is the, the quality of it all right? It's a different microphone I'm trying out. Hopefully it's all right. So that's him done. And so priority 
is getting that blue die back in that workshop just to activate it again as well. Royalties everywhere. Hi, Rach. Thanks, Rach. We do have a card we can discard for a Brighton. You were hello at and your first appearance as well. Hi, everyone. We can always discard two cards to Brighton at all, but I don't think we need to be that extreme. Because two Brightons... Now we can always do it on the workshop, or we could do it with a worker. Although, the worker... I mean... The worker potentially could be saved for research purposes. There's a tile there, waiting for our three influence. I want to hang on to the worker. I'm just going to... Because it's only a two we're using. I'm going to use my workshop. Let's brighten two die. Oh, it could be the same die twice. So I'm going to brighten the blue. And that means rolling it. To come from the exhaust. Two. Could be better. So we'll brighten it again. So it's plus one. Do we increase it by one? I was going to say absolutely. But if we use another Brighton effect for it, not only would it just be a six automatically if we want it to be, we'd get a blue influence, which we seem quite short on. So maybe we don't invent the wheel in this. We could always do the action to do some more brightening, but I think that's a good shout. Discard the wheel and brighten one more time and get to increase the value on another die. Have this one that's all the way down here. This one plus one. Brilliant. That's how to get money, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I'm just focusing on the things that give blue dice, but you only got one blue die. Yeah, over maybe this angle would be a little bit better. They've both got half the section on. Yeah, I only need a black four to activate it and get two silver, which I am kind of chronically short on. And we could get some of these other things doing stuff as well. Because making just one of your things loads of tiles long will get some great benefits. That's refresh all of your crafts people. But you, remember, you've got to pay a silver for every... You're supposed to put it in the leftmost place to pay a silver for every column that you're skipping, so it can get very pricey. But then you will end up with one all-powerful workshop that could potentially be activated with really low numbers. Hey, Doug, how's it going? Just got a copy of Legacy of You in today. Oh, brilliant. We just finished. Like, was that last week? Just finished a campaign of Legacy of You. I loved it. I hope you do too. I've done brightening. That's it, isn't it? We don't need the wheel anymore. Yeah, exactly. Who's going anywhere? We've got workshops. The bot. Do they have an influence in everything? Yeah. They've... Remember my blue influence? I brightened it again, didn't I? Thank you. Yes. Brighten influence. Yeah, they've got wheels. They uh, they, just didn't, they just haven't got folding wheels. The potential folding wheels anymore. So they're going to spend an influence from everywhere. And they are going to get a die, which it, this was their second to last action. So they could potentially have tented. And they were at one point absolutely tenting next time, but not anymore. Well, they still might be, actually, if they have to do the middle action. You know what I mean. Uh, and get a silver. We've got a couple of silver now, and that wants them to put a worker out on one of the rightmost actions, and it's going to be on the top action, so no hiring a camel today. Okay, that's fine though, because we can do our workshop again. Before the workshop this time though, we probably want to use someone so we're not skipping the refresher person again. Do we want to build something? On the one hand, it's giving a silver to him. But it's also a royalty, which is brightening a die. I could have done that instead of discarding the card, couldn't I? It's a royalty, which is a brightening and a leveling up of a worker. And we'd get to use our scribe and someone else. And we'd have some scoring. 
so the scoring options so much is it not it's just my mind so number of white dice you have at the end of the game two points if you've got seven four points if you've got uh, ten and i wouldn't be able to double it because he's already built them so i would be able to piggyback off it he gets i think it's four points he just gets four points for the scoring conditions of anything that he's uh, qualified for four per, four points per influence and ignores what i would have to do this is for sets of colored dice which I've, I've still got my no i haven't got my set i got rid of my dice didn't i testing so maybe that I've got a lot of white dice i need to build because i've only got one camel left the inventing is not happening is it Yeah, I do want to replace them with coloured dice, but I think the way that I'm testing and stuff, it would be easy to get seven. You know, ideally you want a load of coloured dice, and I'm not going to get rid of this blue one because it's kind of vital to everything that I'm doing. Oh, he has invented the horse-powered lens, hasn't he? So we could do that if we can scrape nine together out of these, which we should be able to do because we get a plus two on here, don't we? What's this? Two... Six, eight, that's not enough. Well, two, seven becomes nine. Can we pay the costs though? Because it's going to be two, four, six. And if I exhaust everybody, I have got two, three, four, five. No. Not unless I somehow get some coins first. I'm one short. I could get a coin by. I don't want to do any of those actions to get a coin. By doing the big thing that I'm putting off doing, because I want to spend workers first. Or we go cheaper and build, because that's what I can do right now. And if we don't qualify for the white die thing. Yeah. Bring them back. I think I'm just going to invent. He seems likely to turn next time. I think we're going to have to give him one action. Horse powered lens is a monocle for horses. This is affordable, isn't it? Because it's one to him, my scribe costs two, and the other. I think just giving him one is going to be okay, but watch me regret that. I'm going to do, I'm going to build. So I'm going to need an eight, which I can do by just placing this six. That's going to be fine. So we are going to build this. So he gets a silver. We have to activate the scribe who costs one, two. Let's see if we can keep these free. We're not going to be able to, are they? And then anybody can be the tiler oh you go the the scribe goes up so now they're going to cost three and i'm going to use the tiler by exhausting who can i bring back oh i've got two that will bring back the carpenter i've got one that will bring back the scribe as well my cards that have now had to go off screen because uh, of all the publishing so that's okay right get all your stuff together <laughs> what order do i do things don't forget, I haven't done any other stuff with the building yet. I've cleared this off. I can have a die of my choice in the study when this needs to flip about. <gasps> I've got floor seven. Look at the income that we've now got. So that's that. I need to place an influence. We've got some score in there. I get a royalty, which lets me brighten a die. I am going to bring a new one in. So Tyler should be inactive. Oh yes, thank you. They got uh, they got put to work, didn't they? Let's bring a new die in. A three. That was the bright effect of getting a loyalty, but I need to up the level of somebody. And let's see, we're not planning on using and if we are going to invent the lens, the lens wants the blacksmith to be really high up. So maybe we're not going to be building that. Or publishing it. Now, if anything, the scribe's the highest. I want this drum to be invented. So for them, I'm not going to need the 
like these people are going to get put up anyway or i want the scribe to just be higher if that's going to get built i'm not involved with having the the channeler really high up the scribe potentially could go up anyway the bonus from the tower was oh i haven't done the die have i get a die in your study i am not we don't need to use colored dice on here because i haven't got that thing but we could be getting bonuses couldn't we if you're going to be doing some inventing maybe you want an orange die involved and an extra blue die here and then use it for testing we could get another load of ship movement and that would be three ship movements get this in here it would be pricey but activate your blacksmith which would then level them up to move your ship another space get the what's it Get a black and then you can get the workshop for two coins. Which one? Of oh, this one. How are we gonna get how are we gonna move there though? I agree getting black to activate it. Why have I got orange in my hand? Why do I want orange? Oh, if I was I was thinking of inventing next time so you'd get the extra card. But I'm kind of thinking, what if I get blue and in brightening them, do some testing next time to get another three spots later to get this, and then when we activate it, I can use my blacksmith to move another space, which would get that black thing, and then we've got to order we've got to worry about getting a charcoal die. I'm kind of doing 3D chess over here, aren't I, rather than just do a thing. Orange is great for the study rewards. Pets. For the study rewards. Oh, the, the what's it? Oh yeah, we, we could just as well get orange and just leave it in the study a bit. And not have it right away. Because you don't have to be... I know I brought the thing straight out of the study at the start of the game. But we can be leaving it... You can brighten things in your study and be getting bonuses. Like just leveling up a craftsperson. And then coming out, maybe we'll actually do some inventing. Yes, I'm going to do orange. So it doesn't matter what the number is. You need to get rid of a white die that is not in a workshop or a camel. I can't think of the word for camel. Uh, and But what you really want to do is get rid of one that's exhausted anyway. And you can't use it this round because you've got to keep the same number of dice. Girly Gamer, thank you for joining me. I'll try to make a late one so... Uh, as many people can come as possible. Everyone check out the Girly Gamer channel. I'm really glad you made it. I am uh, I'm frazzling myself. Right. I've done the things, haven't I? I've had the bonus. I published my work on the robotic goblet. I think that's it. And then we'll activate a workshop next time. Is the bot going to tent? Can they spend four silver to do an action? No. Which means they're going to do the bottom action, which means they're going to tent, and they're going to get a silver from me doing an action, but I'm not going to not do it. So they get a blue influence, they get a silver, and because it's their second to last card and they did the bottom action, they're going to tent using these variables and probably stay first player. Oh no, actually, they are taking the extra worker tent, which means they're going to get an extra card. They're going to get an extra worker card in their deck, whatever it normally says. They're going to get one more next time. And they're going to place the dummy tent over here. Probably wasn't going to go in there anyway. It's the same choice for me, but I could, I can get first player by going in either of these. Okay, so they've tented. I'm not done though. I want to make this a six because it's in the top section and I'm allowed. And this can already be a five. So I can get all of this stuff. So get another card. Scales. Water powered scales. Refresh somebody. I don't particularly want to build the horse powered lens. I mean, maybe my blacksmith will get to see. If I got that tile, probably be able to get uh, higher up. 
Let's see. My sc that's what I, I want to get the drum invented, don't I? And then built and published. If I could do all of the bits, get loads of rewards. So my scribe is currently at six. It would currently get the top reward if I get it to nine, even better. But getting it to nine involves getting all of your craftspeople up so that level nine could be revealed. Uh, sets of influence in the different guilds and scales. Different. A number of things with different, like. Number of things you haven't done both of the things on, both publishing and building. There is a reward for doing both that I tried to. The text influence. Text influence. There is a, a text bit that tells you what all the cards do in text. Each individual board where you are either the inventor, builder, or publisher. So does that mean you are only one of the things? Or just each board you're involved in. I would say because of the not equals, you would have to be one of the things. So that would qualify. I'm not, I'm not inventing right now. I won't worry about it. Oh, thank you so much, Angela. I try to be. There is a lot. There is a lot going on. One or more of each of the things. I am involved. Oh, I'm only involved in two things. I don't know why I got excited then. I've been... I've not very really been contributing to the scientific community, have I? I've been doing a lot of sailing. I can get your inventions around in the world. Right. Let's not worry too much about that yet. What was I worrying about? Oh, I drew a card and got distracted. Um, right. Refreshing people. I seem to be doing a lot of building. And if we want to get this... If we want to get the drum built, because the scribe's so high up, maybe we want to get the people that would activate it ready. And I mean, the Chandler's on both, the others don't apply. I am going to refresh the Tyler. It's going to be very expensive to build anything. No, how am I going to afford that? My income's gone up a bit. Let's see if we can. So yes, refresh someone, get two silver. That's going to help a bit as well, isn't it? <gasps> and we haven't done it yet. Get a royalty. We're getting four silver at the start of the turn. Maybe we'll be able to afford to do some things. We also get to brighten a die. So why don't we brighten this orange that's in the study and the... Oh, might as well zoom in, don't I? The bonus that we get for leaving it in the study is another invention card, the needle. So everything where you are the inventor and the publisher. But you only have to, like, you only have to do one to get the points, or two to get the big points. Right. So that was my big workshop run. They have tented, and it's their turn, so they get a silver. I've still got a worker. Might not be wise to be giving them extra silvers for keeping stuff going. Interesting, the research is looking at me a little bit. I can't, I have to place research here, don't I? I have to place tenting research here, and there isn't a free space for it yet. Well, can I place it? Can I place tenting research in the first river bit? Speak as a person that clearly hasn't done much tenting research because he doesn't usually do enough testing. Is usually stranded in last place on the river. I could do orange testing. Sorry, I was going thinks it's, it's nine points. Can't afford it in any of the other guilds, and we don't really want to spend more time getting more influence and stuff. Which I could if I'm prepared to give them a load of silver. This hasn't been activated yet. Get an influence in black. They get a silver. Spend one card and one black influence to get another research. The earlier you get ongoing bonuses, the better, all the better. I mean, yeah, they, they, they'll keep activating, won't they, for the next two rounds? And it is three points. I have to keep research tells in the river, though. I was, I was hoping that the, that the rule would be uh, in my favour. So, yeah, they're going to get to do more powerful things, of course, if we just let them. Or if we were to pass now, we'd get to brighten a die and refresh somebody because we've got a worker unused. 
and that would just be it. They would get no more silver for that. So I don't really want to spend... I could just spend one from orange and employ a worker, but that would involve money and stuff. I have got a lot of cards, so spending a card isn't as big a deal to me. So coming in here with a four, get the influence, they get a silver. I do the research, they get another silver, then I tent. <laughs> research, because you like getting bonuses. Okay, done. On your head be it. <laughs> It's not, it's not my fault. None of the other... If, if we lose now, none of my decisions so far have contributed to this. It's all this getting the influence. I think we'll be all right. Let's give him a chance to get stuff. So it goes back to him. He's tented. He gets a silver. Place a worker. Spend that. What are we not going to build? I mean, my tile is probably not going to get really high up. It does refresh my scribe, though. I've got other cards that refresh the scribe. Yeah. Discard a card. Do that, and we could get the royalty bonus right now, which is four silver, plus another silver, plus a black die. But yeah, let's go for research, because that's another influence here. Stops him doing no research, and we get to look at another three of these tiles. Look at nine of these. So that's, that's when you complete a column of workshop tiles, right? In another situation, had that been the first thing, and maybe we'd pivoted towards that, I don't see us doing that too much. Oof. Gaining an orange die, gaining a black die. Well, we're going to have to have to do some pivoting, aren't we? Because we've gone for this now. Hmm. What are we going to do? I mean, I want to get dice. Opportunities to do that? Mm, I've not really put myself in that great a position. If we're going to be doing some testing, I've only got an orange die to do testing with, which isn't great so far for what's available. But, well, maybe you want to get something invented that's going to move the ship along a lot with an orange die then. I don't like any of them for the position that I'm in. I don't feel like I'm going to be doing loads of tests. That's going to involve me getting loads of... Although, potentially, if we, are, if we were to move three with the testing and get the one that lets us exhaust the blacksmith to move the ship more, therefore getting, potentially, more workshop tiles to fill it in... I don't know, just talking myself into something. This is not going to happen. We are boating. We're doing more boating than inventing, aren't we? And there is this action over here, an influence in everything, get a coin, move uh, ship space. The workshops wanted to... It, to be fair, yeah, it's, it's a much bigger bonus than everything else, isn't it? I don't know why I'm resisting it so much. I am going to go for... Workshop columns and let's boat. So they go on the bottom. I don't know if he's going to be taking anything from here. He's not been testing much, has he? Right. Let's... <laughs> the start of the game. I, I'd say, like, the the first game I played when I barely invented anything, it's like, I'm not going to let that happen again. Let's see what happens if I choose what all the devices are. Every game's ended up going like this. No, I've got all of these other things. Let's try really inventing this game. So I did that. The research and that happened. He gets another silver. He's got about ten. And it comes back to me, but now we will tent. We get another worker for the future. Do I get that gnat? That's not an unused worker when we tent. No, you can't have that. That would be a very cheeky interpretation of the rules. A very wrong interpretation of the rules as well. So. Hmm. I mean, there is no... There is, a, there is always the, the extra Brighton. If we get the royalties again, the royalties don't change, but we are in the points zone now. There is four points for the royalties at the end, and we could be rocketing towards the five income section. And we're building up influence in the Charcoal Temple for the end game. At the same time, leveling up two workers, getting the tower clear, access to the higher spaces. And the temple I actually want to have influence in, the orange one, is good as well. 
That's why I would have gone for spending the orange instead of going for the extra turn to get the black influence. Because you can get back now. Which means Skycroft. I've forgotten something. The way you always know it's home. Well, pretty much, yeah. If you if you were familiar with my playthroughs. <laughs> I think, I think everyone starts with, oh, I think I'm going to go this way. And then never, ever do it again. So yeah, either of these is going to be first player as well. well I'm like, oh, the, the best thing for that will be, well, he, he can get in my way quite a bit. But I'd say he hasn't done the thing I'm about to do a turn before I did it, which is what he has done every other game I've played. But yeah, being first player will be good for that, but also for tenting early as well. For the research, you could have spent the orange. Oh, the orange influence. But you chose to... Ah, I made us do an extra turn, didn't I? Yeah. And I, be I bet I won't even win the orange thing. What am I supposed to have in it? Have I missed that somewhere? Where's, where's the thing that's supposed to have orange influence? I didn't make that up, did I? Oh, it's here. Right from, I'm looking at these. I'm looking at these discard bonuses all of a sudden. There, yes. Four. Oh, we've got three. Surely we'll get one more orange influence. Yeah, I have made us waste a turn, haven't I? I mean, we could get that fourth right now if you pick this. But I know that everything's making me want to maximise this royalty stuff. We're maximising royalties. Go. Up there. More points. Brighten two things, one for this and one because we get to do one when we brighten. I tell you what, we will brighten you because you would brighten anyway in the exhaust. But now when you brighten, you'll come out here. And for now, you get to level up a worker, which will be... I mean, it could be the scribe. The scribe already costs three. But that means if you use the scribe next round, they won't be going up because this is full. Who is not getting used? I am going to say... Oh no, the weaver would get used there. You would get... These do... I don't want to build that. Don't think about that. The weaver. Boom. Up. So that was the benefit from brightening the orange die. And then we will brighten. They will brighten anyway, so that would be a waste. Just get another die available. Yeah. I, sh I, I need to... Lynette, if you're, if you're not watching the chat and you're watching this later, oh, even now you might not be watching the chat. These are two inf This is an influence now and two influence at the end. I am forsaking. I'd still get two Brightons, wouldn't I? Go on then, you've convinced me that I'm wrong. So we can still have the Brighton that I just did. We just tick back on the loyalties. And we're getting two silver. I think you're right. And we still get another Brighton, so we might as well just um, have another die available. Oh, a five's nice as well, because that'll brighten to there. And that's a six. I agree with you. Eventually. <laughs> Reluctantly, it seems. I think you're right now. This is what I need when I play all games. I need uh, people convincing me of the wrong things that I'm about to do. So, we now have... I haven't really sped up. I've sped up a little bit. In round two. Uh, leftmost tent is first player. That's us. Brighten all unused dice. Yes. Exhaust all used dice. Yes. But not you two, because you are ready. A three and a four. No, you can't see. There we go. A three and a four. Return hired camels. I didn't hire one. Retrieve workers. We've got three now. And raise your tents. We get an orange influence. So there's the four. Five, six, if I don't spend any. Seven gets max scoring for that. Oh, and that would be four points twice because I built it and researched it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So we do that. You go up there and dummy player one comes back. And then new first round stuff. I need to put the bot cards back. And let's see what the dummy's up to while I do a bit of shuffling. So they, I need to remember, they got the Envoy, didn't they? So they need an extra worker card. They are going for two orange. 
and a charcoal three on the ship. They are making the ship action cost an extra orange influence and blocking off you and you. That's the dice ones. That's the worker ones. And they need for round three, three of these, but it's going to be four because they've got the extra worker from their tenting. And five of these. And that's down there. And I think after shuffling this, well, I've got the first turn, haven't I? I've got to decide what to do with all of this. I mean, I made a lot of speeches about inventing, didn't I? That, oh, we're going to invent this drum because my scribe's far up. Maybe it's time to do it. Oh, wait, yellow worker, thank you. Oh, and it's not just about making the deck. It's not just about this ridiculous amount of coins they've got. They get three more. Definitely some big actions happening, I think. Definitely. I'm going to run out of space. I'm going to have to shift everything along. I think I did work out if I get rid of, if I like put my hand off screen, my hand of cards, and put my coins like on the board or something, you can just about squash two rows of inventions here. We could like zoom out, but it'll reveal how dirty my table is. I used to think that it's pristine. It can't be pristine though, I've got a cat. There is some dust on the green screen though. There, there we go. Perfect. Oh, I'm looking at the first bot card because it's me in it. Right. So I was thinking of inventing it. I was thinking, oh, I haven't brightened everything because you brighten stuff in the study as well. There is an order to like the stuff that you do. You do the the study ones are last. Remember the like end of I don't think I've written the end of round stuff because it's all covered on that card. But yeah. You get to brighten the study stuff as well. Thanks so much for tuning in, Angela. Have a good day. So this gets rolled because it's coming out of the study. Six. Well, it doesn't matter what it was rolled, actually, because it's plus five up here anyway. Oh, the one thing that you forego, though, by putting it up here in the study, you don't get this influence. If I had brought it out here and then brightened it, I would have got the orange influence. But I did get to level up a worker, and at the time, I wanted that apparently. So, yeah, I've got that to do some testing with, but we haven't... I would like the three movement if we're going to be testing. So is this a feasibility? Could I test... Could I get this, one of these inventions going? Discarding two cards seems possible. Six seems possible. I think this is all quite possible. Oh, actually, I don't even need to use you because plus two on my camels, I can use this four. But what's going to match up though? I want this drum inventing. You would be an orange and a blue. You would be an orange and nothing else. Okay then, decision made. We'll use the six to invent. I need to discard two things. What do we want to refresh? Blacksmith is not an option. Tyler is already refreshed. Chandler is already refreshed. If we want to get them used scribe, so I guess I'll keep that card to refresh my scribe. Should I not manage to do that some other way? Like there. I'm inventing. So, <laughs> prophecy. prophecy. It was foretold many rounds ago. I get a royalty now, which means I can brighten something, and we want blue to be quite high up, don't we? So, because it's got to have a value of 11 doing the action. And <laughs> I was going to say this so much earlier than this. When you invent round three, two hours into the stream, well, you've seen the bot do it. It's just rather than it just being a shuffled pile and just one gets put on there, you get to pick which one of your things. These were randomly shuffled at the start of the game into these spots. And you get to pick what the, what the builder will get as a bonus. But remember, whoever builds it, the inventor gets that as well. If the inventor builds it, you only get it once. You don't get to double up on that. So I can define an option here. And they're also good. But also, if you're going to be doing a lot of inventing, the benefit to that is if you do a vertical pair, oh, there are little bonuses that you'll get when you do both. And for doing horizontal pairs, there's three points available. So doing a lot of inventing, you can get the points and bonuses that way as well. 
So what's going to be most vital for us? If you want to do testing and keep doing stuff along the ship, do we want dice coming in? We do want white dice, but if we're doing testing, they'll go away. Yeah, I think dice coming in. I have used all of my cards, so I'd like cards as well, but my workshop does get me a card at a time. I'm going to go for that. Decision made. If that goes there, have I, I've moved myself on royalties, and I've had a bright, and I did the blue thing. I think we've had the benefits from inventing, and we've seen me invent at last. See, I told you that this was going to be an invention-focused stream. They are spending a worker, well, an influence of each colour, because they're placing a worker. They are getting a die card in their deck, and a silver as if they needed one. And that means they are placing in the top space. There is going to be no hiring camels. Didn't get the influence. I didn't get the influence for matching up, did I? Thank you. Orange and a blue. Right. So, you go there. You are a used card. And... That's them done. So, can I afford... I haven't had my royalties. Speaking of affording stuff, you've done all of the start of round things for everybody else. What about yourself? Four. Just thinking, because I've got a decent amount. That's what I'd usually end up with from income, isn't it? But actually, four from the royalties, two from the income. Look at that. Both got stacks of cash. So I think I can build the water-powered drum. Ten on the dice is surely manageable across all of this stuff that we've got. Because we only actually need an eight, don't we? Which unfortunately gonna be we're gonna be a bit overkill on that. Blacksmith isn't refreshed yet. Tyler's ready, Chandler's ready. We need to refresh the blacksmith first then. So we go over here then. Right? And do our big activation. And that'll let us brighten stuff as well and get some more dice in the mix and some more money. And just hope in the meantime he doesn't invent me amazing water powered drum. So there's no other way. I haven't got a card. I didn't have a card before I discarded them as well that would have refreshed my blacksmith. So yeah. I could discard two cards to refresh something, but I've only got one card left. So you are a four. Oh. Might we have to brighten? Yeah, because you're a four at most. I've got six up here, but we want 11. So that means we either need to discard this and my scribe refresher card. Oh, actually, it would do both things, wouldn't it? I could discard, I could discard this to make this a four. Because it's a, it's in the plus one section, so that's a five. These are sixes anyway. Anything in this section could be considered a six. And it will refresh my scribe for if we want to do publishing this time as well. An invent, a build, and a publish. Could it be possible? So you are actually a five. And you can be a six. We've got the 11. We get a card back. Oh, yes, we can refresh somebody. The blacksmith. We get two silver on our heaps of cash. And we get a royalty. We're nearly in the next section. And we get to brighten something. I feel like... So you're going to need a 10 out there. We've got the dice to do it. I don't know if we've then got the dice to... Publish as well, but we'll see. I think we get a new die in and hope that we roll high. Six will do me. So that's the brighten from the loyalty. And we have workshopped. The bot, my favourite game from the Garfield games, I think, I just want to say, like, oh, the, oh, the one that he's promoting right now is his favourite one. I would, like, if we take inventors out of the mix, I would have said scholars. But I don't know, because Viscounts and Paladins were always battling over it. I really like the I really like the color wheel and color mixing worker placement stuff of scholars. Although, yeah. 
with a grain of salt because hey, I'm doing a sponsored stream to show off the game. But oh, my adventures, like like I say, like I was saying maybe a couple of weeks ago when James asked on Discord, oh, like how does it compare complexity wise? I was saying, oh, this is a lot more complex. This is the this is the heaviest one. Okay, it wasn't like really tough to learn, but there's a lot of like concepts to get you into first, which to be fair, there is for scholars. You've got to learn the, you, you've got to be aware of the color theory and all of that stuff. But I would say, like, I said this at the beginning as well, forgive my repetition. Like, every time I've come back to it, like, I haven't got like a clear vision of what I'm going to end up doing and it's all going to go in that way because everyone's going to get in the way. But yeah, it might be that, like, the flow of doing the steps of these things, like it's not vital that you're always building stuff. It's not like, you know, you, you can be in any stage of this process and still manage victory points some way or another. Like you could just be doing all the inventing and unlocking these bonuses if you want to, and you don't really care about what's going on with the end game scoring on the cards because, hey, you're getting the build bonuses of this stuff to fuel your further inventions. Or you could just be, sailing about and publishing things like apparently we're doing the bot's doing something isn't he have i already spent his money i don't think i have i think i'm a bit of piling it up and talking one two three four and he wants to build well that's fine i was just about to get annoyed at him building my thing but no he's gonna build this then isn't he so let me get his uh, notes up for building Uh, you're not in the notes for building. Spend his silver, used his number focus, you got no choice. You're, you're building this or not. Turn over and move the invention tile. Have I moved that early? I moved that early, I think. Uh, would have only matter if I'd have built it. He puts an influence in there, so he's got a double whammy of influence. It's going to be an extra load of points. Tile. It wasn't mine, so I don't get the effect. Place their influence, move to the highest row of next column. Because the, the columns, I should say as well, that in the multiplayer game, the, there are four inventions and there can be max four builds and there's no limit to the... There's no limit to the number of published things there are, but they're in rows of three in our game. But I think that's just for the bot's choice. They've got the three decisions. Are they, they're building, right? Oh, d would the row influence change them to publishing? Actually, an accurate color theory. I think we've been through this before, Scarcroft. And you've blinded me with science over it. It's the color theory we were taught. I'm sure we called it stuff. I probably just called it colors. Back then, ye olden days, you probably saw them, they would have built. I have published four, around not I? They are doing the thing I don't want them to do. I said building and then proceeded to publish. Ooh, it might not be over yet. No, it is over yet. Well, that's, that's not too bad. Okay, we're not going to get to invent it, publish it, and build it. So they are stepping on my toes a bit because second choice was the top one. So you still need one of these for the top. They're building, spend the silver, use the number focus. Now we turn over the invention tile. I still get the bonus for inventing it. So I'm still okay with that. What die would we like then? Well, I'd like an extra blue so we can do this testing if we want to be moving loads. One more testing. I don't particularly care about I care about sets if we ever did the clock, but I'm not I'm not bothered about that. I can still use our scribe. I'm gonna say blue. Although the benefits are better if you took orange. We've got an orange one. I'm going blue. Stick to your convictions. You don't need to roll it. You need to put it in there and get rid of a white die. And then that flips over there. That's why I was getting confused about flipping the invention tile, because I was publishing and not building. Ooh. And I don't have to pay, if I want to publish that now, it's not going to cost me that money. Although I've got buckets of money now, money doesn't matter. So, they have horned in on the water-powered drum. 
but you know, once you invent something, it's out in the world. Who's the highest row? They have done that. Where have you come from? You should be flipped over, shouldn't you? Because you have been built. There we go. I think I am back on track. So, are we going to just skip to publishing it? I mean, we we're already on level six with the scribe. They'd be on level seven, actually, because we're about to use them. I don't have to pay the money to myself. I would just have to pay three for the scribe. Outrageous. And just pay to activate somebody else. Oh, I had all my workers ready to invent that. Maybe we'll just have to invent something else. This doesn't require any discards. It requires an 11. Let's see, can we get eight? Yeah, you're eight, because plus two on all the camels. You're eight. Three for the scribe. Okay, paid. Activate somebody else. Let's see. If I want grab, that will reward me for having influence in black, which I do already have two in, but that's not... Well, I don't want the scoring of that one either. Maybe we're not doing any um, building of these things. Let's say... So Chandler's on both of them. Tyler's not on either of them, so we'll activate the Tyler for this. He'll cost me two. That's all paid for. I'm doing all of this. Just knocked everything off. I get an influence in the bottom. There. And I got a royalty. We are in the last section. 10 points for the end of the game as well. And we're brightening something. We are brightening. Are we getting that testing done? I mean, I can afford to load up one row. Although that's exactly what you don't want to do because you said you're going to do columns for this. What if you did twos? Then you get an orange influence. Two. You'd want a black die then, though. Move two in blue. Get that one. Then you come up with a black die from somewhere. There. Or you just move three, get that one. Put it in here for next time. But it's not going to get activated very many times, is it? You want to do columns. Moving one would be pretty great. Activate your Chandler to get a yellow, uh, an orange die. My Chandler's active and not getting used for anything. What's going on here? What have you hung yourself up on? What to brighten? So if I brighten this, I can refresh someone. Or I can bring it out and get it ready for potentially testing something. Let's get it out. Although we do get to brighten a lot of times, don't we? It's coming out. It's a five. Ooh. Missed out on some bonuses, but yeah, maybe it'll be okay. Oh, this colour stuff. Oh, because the primary colours of light are CMY. It's horrifying learning about those colours from printers at first. You got Imperium Horizons. Well, it's got a heavy time ahead of you, though. There's loads in that Horizons box, though. I think I have to see where it is in the votes. Like Unsettled is winning the playthrough vote on Patreon, but plug. But uh, another, I think it's like the fourth playthrough of Imperium Horizons is like some sort of like third or fourth on the votes. So that might even happen this month. I've brightened. I got royalties. I think I'm done. And the box can finally have a turn. Think how annoyed you'd be if you were the bot listening to me going on all that time. He's waiting to take a turn. He's got his turns written down, ready. Spend two blue influence to get a research. No, why am I taking his influence off? He cannot research. Someone has got in the way. Uh, he's getting an influence in all of the guilds. Okay. So that's that. So he doesn't place a worker if he does the bottom thing on the card. Back to us. So I don't have a carpenter ready for you. And I'm not particularly bothered about building it. I said my, my blacksmith hasn't been used enough to warrant that, perhaps. Oh, we were thinking about testing, wasn't I? And we could potentially... 
Like if I was to use this yellow for testing on like there and get the three movements, use your blacksmith to move your ship. If I just put this in a new thing, I could activate that. I've got five here. I could activate that in one of these other bits. And then moving the ship, we'd get another tile here. And then that's research opportunities again. And the other thing you were going to say? Column. That's a column. Go for it. Spending the orange die, getting a white die. No more inventory stuff happening. Oh yeah, because hiring a camel's already happened. Move one, two, three spots. Getting a workshop tile. Which one are we putting it in? Well, it needs to have a high number anyway, so let's get it in the four, perhaps. Because someone wants a low number and a charcoal die. We're going to have to work on getting a charcoal die, if that's what we're going to get. So, you go down there, you're not covering up any spots, and I haven't done a column yet. But we'll activate that workshop next, maybe. So testing, that's all that happens there. And it's well, actually, the publisher gets the dice points, so I've just given myself a point there as well. Okay, out here. Oh, now though, I've made it possible to research. I assume they don't have to spend a ton of um, coins for this. Yeah, their priority is to do things not to the right of their ship, but if they're only option for doing research, so they will, they will do research from here. Yeah, so an influence from each of the bits. to research. Which which bit do they go on? Is it still the rightmost spaces they're going in? They're going in one of these, right? But it's one of each of the guilds. They're placing a worker somewhere. The priority is left, right, bottom. Maybe this one puts them in the right. Usually research will put them under there. They're going to block off a space, but research, they just take the top one, right? Yeah, top research tile. They put their influence out here. They've got two points now. And whenever they would test um, stuff, it's because it's on one of the rightmost spaces, yeah. Because the, the other ones are like, they spend two influence of a particular guild to get research on some of the other stuff. So they would use their number priority it's the middle one, so no refreshing old crafts people. They've done a research thing, so I could potentially do a research action still. I would only get one point for it, though, and it would be this benefit. I don't get to draw and, and see, but I, I know now if I research, when I tent, I could get two silver. It would still kick off twice. Something to think about. I've got no camels left. I can't hire a camel. Yes. First choice is the middle space, second choice the top space, third choice the bottom space. Right, so stuff to do. We've got no camels and no way of getting more camels. We've got workshops to activate. I was going to be doing that, wasn't I? So why don't we? I mean, I could get more influence to potentially do more researchy stuff. Or I could make an empty space there and then research. Let's activate this. So I need, or you don't have to go for that. You could do another test. You can't do another test. The camels are full. But you could do another test and move three, and then you get to do all of that good stuff. Bring a worker back from a place. Get uh, a colored worker into your enlightened area, and then access the final section. I think getting this one will work, and then we could choose charcoal here. Oh, it's going to be great. Yes, activate this workshop. I need a five. I need three more from somewhere. Gonna have to be a little bit overkill and do that there. So I can raise a worker or get an influence. You know, if we did that and didn't do the research action, we could raise two more workers and get the tower leveled up again, which would raise another worker. And give us more space for the scribe to keep going up. We want him on um, nine to get the max points, but it's, it's only going to be like two more points. 
still worth having. And we'll, the, the scribe itself is getting three points for being on level seven right now. More the higher we go. Yeah, let's activate this. So I'm definitely going to activate the blacksmith. So that's two silver. They go inactive and level up to move the ship a space. And that gets me that workshop tile. I'm going to put it in the bottom one because then that's free. And it's worth a point. And I can activate it for all that good stuff. And I get to raise a worker and... Ooh! Okay, raise a worker and get an influence. I'm going to get an influence in black just because if we want to do something that activates everything, that will do that. And we will raise you up. And for you, rather than influence, I'll choose to raise a worker up. Now that's empty. We can raise someone else up. We could just raise scribe up and not be researching anything. Because the builder only gets points for the dice, so you want to be testing the stuff that you've built if you've not also invented it. If you've not also built it. The publisher only gets dice points. To raise, you could just raise the scribe. And then they're on eight, but then you've got to get all these people off. Okay, we might... Maybe the, maybe the blacksmith is going to make it to six. Do you know what? Raise the blacksmith up. I'm all turned around on this lens. Combo's all over the place kicking off now. Right, yes. That's what we all do. Yeah, the, t the tower bonus, I flipped it over first, didn't I? The tower bonus was Razor Worker. So I've raised the, the blacksmith another one. And he wanted to go a cheeky further one. Look at the tower. Right. We can see level eight. And as we start to get on here, these are all worth a point if they manage to get up there. So that is my whatever I was doing. Activating that workshop. Yes, they've still got loads of cars left. They're not tenting anytime soon. They're doing a good old fashioned invent. Can they do it on the middle? Yes. Can they get a match there? Yes, they are inventing the folding eyeglasses. And they're getting a match on orange and charcoal. Orange and charcoal. And, and what? That's that. They're putting an invention tile out. So we could make that if we wanted to. That would give the blacksmith some work. Right. This is all the stuff that gets edited out. Not only the sciences, but me saying right and so constantly. I'm about to say it then. We're still in it. So there is research to be had. There is a spot available because we're about to tent. We could just take the two coins or we could get more points and potentially more, potentially a different bonus because we get a lot of coins anyway, don't we? I'm willing. Or you could just tent now and get loads of refreshes and brightens. Mm. Nah. You would need another charcoal influence to be able to get a charcoal die and then you would get the thing again. Oh, I was thinking of you could come here and get a blue die and two level ups instead. Like to keep people going up the tower. But no, let's get a research cell. I want to see more of these research cells. Spend a blue influence, spend a silver. And we're going to research here. It's not ahead of the ship. And we have. So when we tent, add a die of any color. Well, that's the charcoal sorted for next time, isn't it? We might. There's no way of getting a charcoal die now, is there? Is there? There's always a way. Moving your ship. Two more spaces. Which I don't think you can do would then give you a chocolate die. That is available now. We get a lot of Brightons advancing workers, so it's only going to happen two more times. I don't particularly want... I, I want white dice at the end, don't I? So I potentially don't... Can we think of a way that's going to get me a black die right now? Deciding to get a black influence instead of upgrading that blacksmith would have been the way. True. Sure. 
it's going to help for if you want to be testing things. I mean, get in the die when you test the, the when you um, tend the final time. You're not going to get to use it. Not the Brightons. Yeah, out of everything, I think you're right. I would like a black die now because then I could activate my... I suppose... If you make me explain it, you see the ridiculousness in it. I suppose all I'd be getting is two silver. And I've got loads of silver. I just want to activate all of the things. Anyway, it'll let us test a new, an extra thing next time, won't it? I think you're right. But I do want to move more people up. Maximise everything. He's got loads of cards left. Can he pay three cut? Yes. The question is, can he pay any amount of coins? Yes. Although he's, he's got four left, so he can still pay for anything, I think. Can he build? Yes. He can build either of these. His priority, no. Middle thing. He's going to build that. Not an invention of mine. An upcoming invention uh, is going to be the heated... He invented it, so we don't worry about that. There's no one else getting bonuses. He puts his influence on it, and I believe that's all the steps without looking at me, you think. And it's back over here. So there are no camels available. There is a workshop available. Do you care about brightening twice and upping a die? Not really. What could we do instead? We can't research anymore, but we could get a yellow die and three cards, get a charcoal die and your loyalty income, or an influence of each, move the ship another space, get another tile. Oh, but it costs two orange, a lovely orange. We have got right now seven in orange. And if I was gonna rest there again today, that's going to be nine, so I could potentially spend a couple of them, and we might earn more. A folding eyeglass is probably like one of the more conventional things, right? Have you seen those glasses that like come apart? Like people that, I can't remember who I've seen. It's got glasses like that. Not in real life, but someone on the telly. Like if you don't need them for loads of things, you have them like dangling in two halves and then. They must magnetize together. What am I thinking about? Oh yeah, whether to move the ship in extra space for the tile to get the boat. I'm leaning towards tenting. I'm doing a big old lean. I would like to refresh people. Brightening, yeah. He's going to he's gonna be going for ages as well. He has got cards left. Four cards, so he's at least doing three more turns. We'd get to do three things. We could potentially clear this workshop, and if we got lucky with the Brighton, if we got lucky with the roll of it, we could activate the workshop again and do all of that stuff. Or that workshop and get another... We wouldn't be able to get another shift because he's not... Activated. And we would get two Brightons and worker refreshes for passing when we've got two workers available. What about the middle guild? Oh, actually. Yeah, we only have to be spending one and we get to move someone up, wouldn't we? And then I could be using that die for testing, couldn't I? True, true. I don't think it would get to the... We'd have to be really lucky to clear that and activate it again. But these are getting exhausted. I think if I pledged... It would make it harder to end with 10 white. I think we could still do some testing with them and clear them out. We're good. I don't think... We can have 10 white. Yeah, I can still keep that blue. Oh, I've got that blue I want to keep as well. Ugh. I've maybe messed up with that. We'll see. Right, we'll do some testing. One orange influence. And we've got to use a worker 
I'm for some reason still thinking about building the lens, but the only people I've got available would contribute to the lens. So I think we're going to say Chandler. Sorry, I've left you so late. Chandler, you should be the highest one up. You're the best one. Costs two, moves up for this. And then we will have an orange die and orange die, the powerful bonuses as well, if we leave them in the study a little bit when brightening happens, which it might if we tent. And then three cards as well. So then a load of options for Black Influence have that have the have workshop tiles that have just got a white die requirement. Compass section. Are your collected workshop tiles that have no color requirements? Yes. None so far. Uh, black dice, you have workshop tiles and refreshed workers, is that? Each pair of one workshop tile and a refreshed craftsperson. So let's think about, and we've got an array of people we can now refresh or dice to brighten and all of that stuff. Bot, oh, okay, another green screen, are inventing. They do the bottom one, yes. Is this going to be a match? Yes. They are inventing the heated lantern. I mean, perfect. But they're getting two matches out of that, a blue and an orange. Invention style, this is their fifth invention. I've done, let's just say not five. And that's their thing. So. We still have a worker. And we still have a load of influence. We can still get more stuff. If you got a die, if you got an orange die now, it wouldn't enter the study. It would just go into your exhausted section. That's what this bit's saying. I didn't get rid of a white die, did I? When I got that orange die, I don't think. Did I? How many should I have? Thirty. I'm sure we can count if I've got the right number. I'm not sure if you're removed. I think if you think so too, I don't think I did it. I've done it now. Though. Right. So I've got 11 now. Which is wrong, isn't it? Did I start with 11? And I got an extra one from this. 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. No, 12, 12. Yeah. Yeah. We're right now. So, we could still do some more orange influence. I don't really want to gain a thing. I can't do any research. Can't afford in the black or the blue. Don't think it's the best idea to just move a space in the ship. We've got plenty of scope for testing next time. Well, do you know what? Might even want to just go last and get the camel for maximum stuff opportunities next time. Do you know what I mean? And raising two workers isn't a bad idea either. And if we go again, if we go again and get to Brighton two times, we'd get to raise again and this would be emptied. I'm talking myself into that. I think royalties we can probably do anyway. The more orange influence would be lovely. Because there is a bit of competition for that. But we get a lot of money and we could always do it with more brightening. I think I'm going to tent camels. Yes. So when tenting now, we need to put a white dye in the... That's the exhausted section, isn't it? in the exhausted section, and I can raise two workers. Let's just do the lowest two, because we'll do another one in a bit, I hope. And that's just that for now, isn't it? Bot. Testing. I'm testing. Although, it's been the same thing. They're color focused. They want to test an orange die. Can they do that? Yes. Their priority is in the middle row. So it's that one that will move a load. So maybe it's worth publishing that, because it will be worth a point now. Uh, so they roll that. No inf A six? Don't forget the dummy. Oh, yeah, the dummy tents. What do I not want them to get? I don't want them getting any orange influence. 
Also, do you get the black dye now? Oh yeah, I just tented, didn't I? Should we go for black? I mean, I have got a couple of blue already, haven't I? I mean, black there would be nice. Although I want them on things that I would get the most benefit out of. A black dye might... We want to test with it, don't we? It would get influence as well. Got an orange there for you. Just load up things I've made with dice. Let's say black, so I'm not thinking about it for an hour. Yeah, when you tent, get a die. Done. The bits. He's testing. He's done there. He hasn't moved three spaces, though, has he? Yeah, I was obsessed with charcoal dice earlier on. I think it's still good. We can maybe load up one of my inventions with dice for more points as well. And sometimes I'm not going to want three ship movement because it would be wasted at the moment. You'd want a two and then get your more out. He's done his testing. So a couple of points available on these things. I moved the wrong boat. Yep, he's not the dummy, is he? Finally doing some testing. Right. It's back to me. We have tented. I didn't do this. Brighton and refresh a worker for every... Refresh a craftsperson for every worker stroke camel available. I'll refresh my scribe. Now it comes back to me. We can activate a workshop. We can brighten. Oh, and brighten. I'll brighten the orange. So I can gain a card. We can spend a worker to clear a workshop and then potentially use it again next time. We can activate a workshop. What needs to get that workshop tile? Thank you. We can refresh a craftsperson. We can brighten. I think brighten again. And then they'll just be out, won't they? In the, in the standard brighten. Because I can level up a craftsperson now with this orange bonus. Up there. This is empty. Swap a white die for a coloured die. That's a white die anywhere, isn't it? That could be like an enlightened white die. It keeps its number in position. We've seen tower level nine. We'll swap. Aren't you the guy that wanted white dice? Yes. Yes, I was. I'd be right. I want... Blue. Yes. I don't know why. Uh, so I'll swap you for a blue. Or, no, 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 no. I swap you for a blue because then you will, you know, international symbol for when dice go up. And then I'll get an influence. Right. What's that from? That was from brightening on your turn after you've tented. Then, three whoop, silver to publish. Yes, he can. His priority is the top one. So spend the silver. This is what he's publishing. It's his invention, so he doesn't pay anything to me. Puts his influence down. That's that. A few more points for him. Then, I'll put my money somewhere you can see it, but nowhere near the bot's money. And I've got, I've got cards. I've got loads of cards. Back to us. Oh wait, that was his second to last thing, but he did the top thing, so he's going to tent next time. So we've got one more thing to have. Brighten and get a silver. Refresh craftsperson. And what are you thinking about doing? Oh, have built things. How many things have I built? One. Okay. Forget that then. <laughs> Blacksmiths on five. They're not involved in this building, but I will. So you're going to brighten anyway, so it would be a waste. Don't necessarily need a silver. Oh. 
for you, if we're going to build you, or we could invent something, but we're not going to take, oh, there's not enough gambling. I already want to test four times to get rid of these dice. Don't think about these. Activate your blacksmith in case you move along a ship with them. Good idea. Okay, bot is tenting. They want to go there. Unfortunately not. I didn't write down in my notes where they go next. I think it's the, they go to the right. Caught them out. Uh, this is block, take the next base to the right. Okay, well now they're competing on. Things get spicy in the last round if I start hitting those immediate research tiles. Ooh, yeah. I in here. I only need to test twice. Ooh. So I could still be inventing. We'll refresh people some other way. Right. They've tented. So, do all your bits. Leftmost tent is first player. Well, I picked the last thing, so we knew that was going to be him. Brighton all unused dice. So, Brighton you. You need to be rolled. Blue influence. Because we've just gone past that threshold. You come out into the top bit. All of the sixes. Do I want a silver or do I want the dice available? I want the dice available. Although we'll probably be able to brighten. One. That's what I get for doing that. You guys are exhausted. I don't blame you. You guys are ready. A bit higher numbers than that. That's all the dice. Exhaust used dice. Return hired camels. Ah. Retrieve workers. You there. You there. Raise tents. So he doesn't get anything immediate, because I have the immediate bonus, but he's still getting stuff over here. And then... I'm getting a camel. That two and six should be in the ready zone. Where have I put it? Where have I put it? Is it this, this two six? Should be ready, not inspired. I don't know what I did there. Getting too excited. I thought there was a lot of dice in that uh, final section. Raise the tents. Done, done. Then we are getting ready for the final push. I didn't really speed up that round, did I? Oh well. Having fun. Two blue. One black. Even spread of his influence ish. Not really piled into one. There are just more dummy cards where he could have gone. Five river spaces. And he's making this one cost more grey. He's saying no to two orange influence and no to a blue and a coin. Oh, thanks, Lynette. Hope I win. Always open that. He's not getting any extra stuff because he didn't go in an extra space. And he's getting six dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three worker. One, two, three. And he is the first player. So we can defer any decisions for a bit. What are you up to? No, are you? Oh yeah, start. I haven't even done his income. I've done nobody's income. He gets three. And then I get five to tease you. We're about to reveal the card. One, two, three, four, five. Loads of silver, in short. Three from here. Some good income. Despite, I don't think I've ever had any of these bonuses, actually. Maybe we'll do that this time. Although you want to get rid of the colored dice. Get the, the bonuses from doing the camel actions. I think, good job, I never took that. I'd probably have been more disposed to try and get coloured dice and put them on camels if I'd taken the... They go to the ready instead of exhausted power. So spend three silver to build. He can build. He's building the... Oh, no, he isn't. I was going to say horse-powered lens. He's building the heated lantern. Priority's the bottom. So... 
poppy's thing on built. So that goes up there. And I think that's that. Okay then. So we are in the testing zone, really, aren't we? Do I want to... Do I want to move one first? Not... No, I don't think you do. You can always move one later. And then if you do all your testing first, you potentially added more to these rows first. Yeah. I want to test and move two. So how about we test something that I have full control of? It doesn't matter if you're in control of it. As long as you have published it, you get the dice benefits. It's going to be hard to do. An orange there. Place a worker on the move your ship space. Oh, for like influence. Oh, yeah. And then we could just do it with that. And then we could be doing it with dice. I was just thinking like. Oh, yeah, I've just taken him off when. Oh, there's dice spaces there. It's like, oh, there's no space for these dice. I thought I hired a camel. You refresh a worker when you go over there. What have I missed? On the... You refresh a worker... On the move your ship space. Well, like... This one? Oh, oh, I see why you're saying that. I see why you're saying that. Because I get a worker back. Very, very good point. So, yeah, if we spend an influence from everywhere, took a while. So, it's a bit late. What time is it? It's 11 o'clock. Right. The gears are winding down, but no, we're getting wound back up. We're running out. That's in max now. Move the ship. Get a tile. If you're going to be putting blue in there, why not of the blue activate another thing? And we'll maybe get another column going. You go there. Lovely. Bot. Are going to spend two orange influence. Yeah, clear off the competition for orange, please. And they're going to place a worker. Priority. Left, then right, then bottom. Where have I written that down? Somewhere. Yes. That is their priority. Left, then right, then bottom. Don't want to go the cheaper places first. Then, nope. Shouldn't be doing all this stuff for them because there is nowhere to research. They are simply getting three silver. Did you get the coin as well? I don't think I did get the coin. Thank you. They're just getting three coins. Which, even if they don't spend these, which they probably will and do good things with them, if they didn't spend them, they are still uh, with a point each at the end of the game for them. Whereas for us, it's four for a point. So now the plan is we only want to move one. So rather than with testing, do we just do that with this? As long as we put an eight in. Like. I suppose whatever you do, you're going to have to have dice high. Like, like this. Yeah. Because that can be a six. And the blacksmith's been activated. It's almost like I thought of this. Costs him two to work. We'll move the ship a space. Not for... Oh, yeah. Move the ship a space. We're on here, we get the worker back, we get to add a die, a cold die into the ready section. And it's just added though, it's not replacing a white die. Hmm. Another blue?
best opp opportunities for ship movement. I've got black. It needs to be a bit higher, but that's not too hard to do. Higher blue, really. We could do orange. We've already got an orange. Blue. We've got blue down here. Blue. Four. Oh, four. That's better. Right. That was that. And these get revealed. Spend a scribe to get a research tile. My scribe's available. You do need a 12 doing that, but still. And you'd only want to move one on the boat. Okay, does that get flipped over? The whole stack gets flipped over, doesn't it? If it doesn't, pretend you never saw this. So that was doing all of that. I get an influence in the blue. And we still haven't had an influence anywhere. Maybe black now you've got no influence. Maybe orange because you want to have influence in orange and you keep spending it. Or upgrade workers. Get them higher up the tower. I mean, what did you want, Scribe? On nine? You could maybe do some publishing at some point and then use this opportunity to get them up here. They still only cost three. And it's making them worth more points. Done. It's decided. Right. Don't forget the blue. Yes, I've caught up. Done. Bot. Inventing. Oh, there should be another invention tile out here, shouldn't there? Can they get a match? What do they want to do? The middle? Is that a match? Yes, it's one match. They are inventing the miniature pump. And they are getting a grey and an orange. They're beating me in orange now. We're neck and neck. Having to win that well, you'll just have to tent there, won't you? Or get some orange influence. Now. Testing. So, so that we spend a worker to get plus six when you're activating a workshop. Or when you're activating this workshop. And place the oh yeah they cannot invent anymore the miniature pump is their final opus to make it easier to do the higher things we could do like we could do potentially this bit with a with fairly low value dice if we did that spend your weaver to boost two other people up I know that's not possible because it's four away but still, I want that. This is the bet. This is the one I want most initially. Do this, get it there, and then get it activated and fill that research thing in. That's what I want. Do it then. How do we get one? Pop a blue there. It's got to be higher than a four, though. Or can it be equal to a four? It can be equal, right? Must be, or then a six will block everything. If you like the scribe research one. Yeah, I think scribe research now, and then we get Weaver double worker up, is my plan. And say goodbye to doing any more inventions, maybe. Every pair of research and refreshed worker, that might be possible. Like, refresh them all at the end. We could even just move the ship a space by going here, but we, we want to do testing, don't we? That was the, the point of this. So, four. Blue getting a blue influence and one ship movement, please. And we'll pop this. I mean, it is tempting in a way. I do want the column bonus, but I've got to activate this with an 11 anyway. It's not going to be much of a stretch to make it activate with a 12, is it? Rather than make this one need a 12. Could make this one need a 9 in a minute. Pay a silver to pop it there. Are we covering anything up? Unfortunately not. 
then no then i'll get a white die and pop it on there but can they pay four silver absolutely to build yes what would you like to build you can't build that one you can build that one they're getting a lot of build points no more building though and they can't invent anymore so because they've done six inventions so pop that there and that's that isn't it now we just need to make blue better first because we can't get a 12 with what we've got right now ideally we'd want to brighten it twice which we can do quite easily Or, I mean, what do we want? That's a six. We want it as a six, don't we? So I could just discard four cards. Well, actually, I could discard this card, which would brighten it and give it a plus one. You'd ideally want it brightened again, because then you'd get the blue influence too. I could just spend a load of cards to bump it up to a six. Because on the one hand, what are you doing with all these cards? Dropping them. And then we can do it now, because he might research. What would you have to spend? That would make it that would make it a four. You'd only have to spend three cards. You'd still have three cards. Snap it up before the, uh, yeah, I think you're right. Let's keep a a refresh of each other thing. Because you're not gonna get you're not gonna invent it and build it and publish it or anything, so don't worry about that. We will do Brighton and up. And then, so that's a four. And then up and up. Oh, but that does refresh somebody that doesn't need refreshing. I can't do anything about that. I've got duplicates. So, yes. Yeah, because then you're a five in that section. So you can be a six. And then you can be a six in this section. So we can do all of the things. So first of all, let's spend our scribe three silver for that. And get a research. Get that influence up there. There's another point. It's only worth one point getting in the end. And then... Immediate bonuses. An influence in everything, and then an influence in anything. All the craft people, and there's four of them down right now. A die, and then another dice off. Well, I don't want that, do I? I think I've got enough dice to do stuff with. So I think it's two or three. What are you going to use the people for if you refresh them? Fair point. Influence, probably. I think influence. Maybe we'll be competing. A bit more competitive for the stuff at the end. Oh, we're running out of influence, though. Good problem to have. But then you, you can only move it if you would gain it, if you've uh, run out. And then an influence anywhere. Orange? I mean, how much have I got right now? Four, six. And I want seven. And then it would free me up to... Like I could go in one of these for the end, but I could also go here to just level two people up. Maybe it's going to be the difference of making more points, or whatever it is that I mean. Yeah, I'm going to go for that. So that was just researching. We've got more stuff to do here. We've got royalties. That's on 12 points right now. And we can brighten. Well, let's get a blue die available. A five's nice. Sorry bot is that done they'll come back at the end get another card I can brighten and plus one if i want refresh somebody i mean the scribe if you're thinking of publishing i don't know if i am because all of that one all of this free 
Maybe it'll come to it. Uh, and two silver. Bot. Can they pay for it? No. The first time in a long time. No, they can't. Do you know why I'm grabbing a worker? They are getting an influence, which I've left nowhere near their workers. Influence and a silver. Influence in blue. And a silver. And then. More testing. I wanted this, didn't I? To go in the bottom and then they get that activated. So I want to move three. So blue down here. There's nobody on there actually, so it's a bit of a waste it being five. Doesn't matter. Because it could go there. But let's, let's just get the three. One, two, three. White die comes here. No influence to be had. So we're doing testing. Grab this. I get a die. I think it's still okay. I will have orange. And I've completed a column, so I can move someone up and I can get an influence anywhere. Orange. I mean, I can probably compete on some of the, he gets two extra there. Yeah. Well, that noise was. Testing, yeah, all good. So. Oh, that would make it count as if you played an orange die, even if you didn't. Cool. Probably not to come out of this late, but. That's shuffling for you. Bot is going to spend an influence of each. No, he isn't. Because I got in there first. He is going to get an influence in blue and orange. And a silver. That's it. She's still got three cards left, I think. One, two, three. Yes. Green screen. Stay. Right. More testing. And we get to the end. And we get... It's the choice of one of them, isn't it? Where's ship on my notes? Yeah, you can have the top tile, or you can have two silver, or you can have any tile to your left. But you know, make a research space, and then we go and do research. Ooh. More testing then. Because it doesn't matter how many spaces now, you just stop at the end. And every time you move in the future at that point, you just reactivate the last space. And we'd get that tile. No, no, we wouldn't and, it's or. And if you place it in your middle workshop, you immediately, <gasps> let's get testing. So we've got an orange, was I saving that for something? I don't think I was. I need it to be six. I need it to be higher than a five. So let's uh, let's make it a five. Let's make not make it hard for myself in case I want to put a black there. But I don't think I do. Two spots there. And an orange influence. So I am thinking this one here. Spend a craft person to get plus six. Make it easier to do this, and uses a craft person for getting them up. I've got the silver to be activating them. So it says plus one on two dice and a coin. That, that requires an orange. Yeah. I'm going to take something to the left. Oh, but I'm not going to get to use it, though. So if you're thinking of getting something you want to use, I think I need to place the white die there. If you're thinking of getting something that you might want to use, maybe leave that and get it next time. I don't know that you're going to get to activate it, though. It doesn't matter what you take, then. Just take one. Put that there in the middle, which is free. Got a point there. And that thing that I hadn't even noticed is research. So we get to immediately research without paying all the influence. And what are our immediate choices? Hire a camel. Well, we don't need to hire a camel. Ooh, there's get a tile and an influence anywhere. 
I would just be moving an influence. So I'm not, I'm not going to take that one for sure. I would just be moving an influence because I've got no influence left. But I would be able to get a tile, which I could get this one and, and help me activate this maybe. Probably don't need that. I've probably got the cards that I could activate it easier anyway. But it would be another column for another influence and a worker level up. Mm. I don't think you need it. I think they're just, just the two worker level ups. And then you test again, you get another tile, that'll fill the column. Two worker level ups, please. We're going to be using the weaver for this. So, for the two people that aren't the weaver, please. Then, what was all that from? I tested, didn't I, at some point in the ancient past? Combo's kicking off. I think it's the bot's turn, unless I've forgotten bits. But I'm sure you could tell me. They will test. If they want to test with an orange, can they test with an orange somewhere? Yes. Two opportunities. Priority is in the middle, so they're going to test over here. And that's that. Oh, they... No, 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 that's not that. Do they have to stop here? I think they do, don't they? They stop there, and I think they get a... a card, right? To represent when you would get the extra die. Yes, shuffle the top dice scheme card in, and that one would be shuffle the top worker one into their thing. They have to stop like me. Oh, they were at their second to last card, so they're definitely not tenting. They tested. It was all good. That's it. Okay, back over here. I do want to activate that. See, taking the, it's taking the topmost tile, isn't it? I don't want that. I could take anything to the left. If I test now, is there anything I would like? What about using the channel? No, you don't want to use the channel. If it was upgrading a worker or something, yeah, I don't, I don't really need to get extra dice, though. Getting cards. Eh. I don't think any of the activating tiles make this better than it already is in terms of activating them. This makes it easier to activate. I wouldn't have to... Like, I could just do it with a really low number, like a three. And I would get the added bonus of getting to use a worker, I suppose. Making them worth more points, because I've got the silver to spend. Maybe the bottom workshop, yeah. I'm thinking... Because I could activate... I've got... That's seven right now, isn't it? Because I probably don't want another research. But I can, I can afford, I've got the influence to afford it, haven't I? I mean, I've got cards. I'm not going to invent, am I? Maybe I will. So that's six, seven. I would just have to discard two cards. It's just that at the moment... Well, actually, no, you just have to discard one because this one um, ups it, or you could use your... No, I can't think of that word anymore. Tell me the word, I mean. Brighten. I could brighten that to bring it in, but and then use that for testing. But we could use other things to brighten. Brighten that, because then that's plus one. Up it by one. Then that's the nine that we need. Boom. Kind of influence cap now, right? Maybe Spencer. Yeah. Because I could spend... Mm, well, actually, spending down here... Because this is brightening dice as well, isn't it? We can still do that and leave them there. I think out of the bonuses... Yes, exactly, Shem. Out of all of the bonuses, craft people bumps is what I want. Because I'm in second place in this guild right now, but that's only a point. Whereas even moving craftspeople up is more points than that. So, two blue influence, and then we've got influence to gain for whatever it was I was talking about. You're all right. Blue die there. 
upgrade two people. So, you. And this is empty. So we get a royalty. I didn't even need to discard that card, did I? And then we get a Brighton. But then you could bring these out and you could test with one of them. I'm going to Brighton and put you up there and get me a card. Level 10 of the tower is visible. Will we get people up there? I don't know. I only care about the scribe being at level 9, which they already are. So it might as well be someone that isn't going to get to move very soon like the Weaver. Two worker bumps done. Bot. Can they spend three? They can not because the build area is full. So can they invent? No, they've invented too many times. So they're just going to get two silver, which even if they don't get to do anything else, that's two points. You can bump. The word is covered by an animated heart in my streaming software. It might, it might just be the. You can bump the scribe now, right? Scribe, 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 scribe. Oh, like, uh, now I could activate them and move them up. Yeah, maybe that would be better. Maybe, um, maybe publishing something. Pairs of research tiles and refreshed workers. And then we go and refresh all of the workers. Two, three. I mean, max is five, so it wouldn't be enormous points, would it? Know why I was advertising it like it was going to be some amazing game winning thing. Number of things built. I've done no building. I've done one building. I mean, that's the best thing out of all of these. You can bump the scribe right now instead of the. Yeah, I don't need the scribe one higher, but I could now, if I was to use the scribe, they could now go one higher and be worth another point, and I could research, I could publish something. Getting more royalties would now just refresh people or give me a coin because I'm at max royalties. My green screen shifted. Oh, yeah. I keep looking for sticky dots. I can't find them. I tried using blue tack, but it makes it all wibbly wobbly. You want to test once to get to... Oh, will that get me to 10 white dice? We should test again, then. So the black die is spoken for. And we should do that first because that will brighten these out and then we can test with them. Okay, you were already at nine, so we will activate the workshop. But if we're testing, we could get a tile. But we've already established the tiles are useless, useless for you in this particular situation, so don't worry about it. So then you could research again. And that's another point. And potentially points from these. Yeah, but this is going to enable us to test. It's fine. Just do it. Trust me. Level that up. Spend three coins. Got loads. Up two workers. We'll up you two. Get two coins. Because we are at four or more and black was used. Up a die in. Let's brighten you to level up a worker. Chandler can go up. <gasps> this moves my... This moves my ship. So now you'll see, Exhibit A, uh, there's now instead of an arrow to flip it, there is an X to say, that's out of here. We get a ship action, which we're not bothered about, but what I am bothered about is, maybe he can research, but maybe I can research, and I want immediate good time things. And even if he gets to research, I could research the same thing. Oh, and if you place a workshop tile in the workshop tile in the bottom, you could use it immediately. So I could get that and get the two cards, and that's worth two points. It's just if I take one from here that isn't useful in its ability, I was thinking I could research again. And I don't know if there is another one that ups two people. Or if I'm just being um, too optimistic in that. I'm going to go for this one. It gets me a card right now for filling in that gap. And then we've done another column, which is upper worker. Which could do the scribe that way. But everyone's worth one more point going up. So, I don't know. Let's say you. 
and then get an influence somewhere. What are we on orange? Two, four, six, seven to two, four, six. And I've got an extra two there. If you're thinking of researching again, though, you're going to be spending something. You could still use the tile you just took. Oh, yeah, just activate it to use someone like the Chandler. Good point. Oh, yeah, I was thinking about that when I was delivering over that tile for you. So what if I just... I've got cards. I don't care about having that influence there. Try and compete for the blue. Oh, you're not competing for anything. Just put it in somewhere. Right. What was that? What was all... Oh, that was moving the ship, which did that, which did that. Then we've got another Brighton. So we want one of these coming out so we can test another time. There is a orange spot, but maybe that's a bit dangerous because it's the only orange spot. Whereas if you bring your blue out, you're missing out on bonuses, but there's a million blue testing spots and the next bot card can't stop you from doing that. Although I'm sure we could brighten some other way if uh, it went wrong. Right. Bot. Ah, oh, typical. He's researching. One chance that he can research. Although we'll get to test and that can give us a tile and then we can research. We can still do it. They're going to act actually get to research. Spend two black, so they are going to pop a worker in the leftmost spot there, which I think is where I was going to go. No, I was going to go for one and a card, actually. Uh, so they're going in there. They pop an influence there, and they put the topmost thing here, which is get a royalty and your royalty income. So I could still go in the second most slot there. If it was something that I really wanted, I can still choose that. And it's the same amount of points still. But I don't know if there'll be another one. That'll look me twice on the workers. Look at the tower that's going on. Right, so we want to test, which will give us a tile, and then we can research in that. So, unless he does it again, he did the top thing, so he's going to tent next time. He's not going to do it. He's going to tent. Right. So, testing's going to be with blue. Your problem is that you have um, you only got two on it. I want it somewhere that I care about, but that would mean it needs to be a six. Well, we've got all these cards. Three, four, five, six. Or you can just brighten dice twice. Do I need the cards for anything else? I can't, they're worth point. You're spending a point to do that. I think that's okay. But then you won't have cards to activate this. You need one of the cards to research. Yeah. I was going to do it in black once I with the card. Well, they just might get more silver, might not they? If we procrastinate a little bit. Because we can just brighten twice, can't we? Brighten that. I don't know why I ticked it up one. Brighten that, and it's up there, isn't it? No, it was down there. We'll just brighten that twice, you get a blue thing. I don't think it's going to stay there. Or we could do blue instead. It's pointless, the research being in, in either of the, the blue or black guilds when there's only that amount. And now that can be a six for testing purposes, and let's just go where... Oh yeah, there. Get me another blue influence, but I'm full. Which you could, you can move it. Like if you're abandoned in black, it's only one point. Maybe you'll get first tent there. Okay then. So that's that, isn't it? You bright into it. Oh, and you can up a die. I'm I'm skipping a worker. I'm skipping an action, aren't I? You've already been bumped. Yeah. Next time we'll do that. Maybe I won't have all the influence. He tents. He is tenting there and dummying there. Okay, we're not getting blue influence that way then. Then, Hi, Rach. Are we going to bed? Uh, yes, please. This is the last action, Rach. I didn't speed up through the future rounds. 
Right, so he's tented. Then... You're testing, you're testing, you did it. I mean, I could do... You can't do research first and spend the influence because... You haven't got the free space. So we'll tent and get that. Oh, this down here lets us level a worker up. Yeah. And then next time we can spend Was it worth moving an influence? It's not worth having one in there because he's got two. Oh, I could go there though, couldn't I? And have three. If you tense in the right space, you'll be able to top research. I'll be able to research. Oh yeah? So maybe we don't even need to do that. Could just tent there, and that's that. I haven't put a white die here from the testing. And then keep the influence there, and I'm second. If you go to the blue temple spot, you'll... I was going to get a research tile, but... Actually, I probably don't need the research tile. Thanks, Rach. Because, yeah, I can just have it from empty in this. Because I'm not going to empty it anymore, am I? I was going to do the research option, but yeah, it will just happen from clearing this out. So I probably just want a tent, don't I? Just tent down there. So I was kind of thinking of there, if I'd left the influence in, I could take second place, which is like a six-point swing, isn't it? Like, say I hadn't, I'd just chosen not to gain that blue influence that I just got for this. If I tent here, I can take the... No, I've already got three. I've already got three to his two. I don't have to tent there. Don't take that blue influence. Leave that as it was because you're getting second place there and you don't want to give that to him. The research spot is better. Yeah. I've just realized I don't need any more influence there. We're fine to do that. Boom. Let's tent. Just thinking, yeah, leave that, leave that in black rather than move it to blue. Level them up. We get a research action and some immediates. Level seven is out of here. And what have we got? You can have four enlightens. You can have a ship. Or you can gain a die and swap a die again. I think we've cycled through them. Four Brightons isn't going to do anything, is it, at all? A ship tile is... A, a ship movement is another tile there. Oh, and we can pick a tile that's just worth points. Yeah, absolutely. Ship. Because we active, this would be no good, and we actively don't want to gain any colored dice. So, you there, I need to lose an influence. I mean, lose it. Mind you, what are we here? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 versus 2, 4, 6, 2, 4, 5. We can lose it from orange, can't we? We don't need it in orange. Already secured it. He's not doing anything to alter that now. I feel like maybe he should have a coin. He should probably have a coin. I might have skipped a turn. No, I'm tenting, aren't I? Uh, maybe he should have a coin. If it comes down to one point, there's a question mark on there. But I'm having it. Right. So yes, we're just taking a tile that's worth two points. Don't really care what it does. I think I've knocked him from somewhere. No, I don't think I have. Take a tile that's worth two points and pay a coin to put it in the wrong column because that gives me another ship action. And we can just grab another tile that's worth two points. And why not refresh all of the people?
And I think that's that. So then, skip steps one to five and just raise your tents. So I get to hire a camel and he gets the envoy, but it's too late isn't it, for any of that stuff. Oh, I knocked a tile. That's what, I, that's what that noise was. The dummy player doesn't go up there at all. And let's score. Let's pad. So, oh, this is nice and visible. Put all of my stuff on here for now. And there is a, this is like the, the setup stuff for the play count, what you would start with. And there's a little reminder of the, the categories on your thing. But maybe you've uh, made notes as well. Like I have. So any tie breaks, the ships break ties. Oh, that will matter for the blue guild, right? We don't actually share it, but it's, it's, it's between me and a bot anyway. It's not like there's a big swing involved there. So first of all, that's not going to be on there, is it? Uh, the first category is guild majorities, and the bot, I believe, fits in the exact same way for the first two categories. So first of all, guild majorities, and looking at them, we have the bot at five plus two in blue there because he's got that ship. So he definitely wins that and gets the four points. Writing the names in. It's four. Me and the dummy player have three each, but I am further on the river, and so I get that precious point. Over at Orange, I think we've already worked out, I win it, and he gets second because he's beat the dummy which is five and two. And then over in black, Dummy wins it, but I have got three to his two, so I get the second place, which is, oh, I'm putting these in separate categories, which is a mad thing to do, because these need to be totaled up. I, of course, just use the other columns, but I want this to look all nice. So that should be, Nine versus six. This has gone really, really well. Right. Then, royalties track. Oh, the bot doesn't score the same as I would because they don't score this. They don't have a royalty track, but I am all the way along it. Then, research tiles. Research tiles, research tiles, research tiles. Why am I confused by that? The, the influence for him. 3, 6, 9. It's very late. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 on research. And they have managed 3. Do they, they score the same? Yeah, research tiles just like you would. Workshop tiles for them. Oh, they don't have craftspeople. My craftspeople. Loads. 4, 8, 12, 16, 25. To Nout. Workshop tiles for them. They managed a whole three workshop tiles. Uh, they just get it's two points each, right? Can't scroll a mouse with holding tiles in them? Yes, two points each. They ignore what the tiles were. So they get six points for their workshop tiles. But if you would like to see a few more workshop tile examples, hey, they could have paid any. You've got to have 12 on orange, but pay any influence to move your ship. I got the Weaver to do two Enlightened, and it's very low value, and it could be any colour of die. And there's, there's loads more that haven't made it into the game. Probably about 20 more, like between this pile and the things that haven't made it into the game yet. There's loads more of them. Workshop tiles for me are the actual values on them, aren't they? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, here's where we might fall apart a little bit. Inventions. You could potentially get 12. Let's not fall apart, I think, but here's where we'll score none. Uh, we could potentially get 12 points for getting all of these out. I have got none. The bot gets three points for every invention tile. They used them all. There are six, so they get 18 points there. So clawing it back there. And probably in the building and stuff. Built and builder and publisher influence. So this is where these bits come in. So four. Find the right button. And actually, can we do like a semi-zoomed in angle so you can see the inventions and... Okay, well, if I zoom this out a little bit, 
you can see the inventions and the scoring bit perfect. So, for things that are still built, the builder gets a point for every die on them and they will qualify for the scoring stuff. So, the bot over here built all three of these things and there are two dice present, so that's two points. Make a note of that. For the stuff that's published, the builder gets three points. So when, when the builder and publisher are different. So over here, over here they get three, over here they get three. So they get another six for that. I didn't build anything when it's different. The publisher, when the two are different, just gets a point per die. So I would get two there, three, four, and they would get two up here. Then, when the builder and publisher are the same person, they get one point plus one for every die. So that's me here. I get three in total there. One point for doing it, plus a point for each of the dice. And then here they get one plus another one for doing it, which all tots up to seven for me and 12 for them. Then it's scoring conditions on stuff you built and or published. The bot just gets four points, check any cell in the truth, for every influence, ignoring whatever the scoring conditions were. So max points on everything. So he is going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times four, 32. And then we get, so the level your scribe is at, Nine, that's exactly where our scribe is. So we get the maximum four points. We only did one, of, we only published. If we'd have built and published, we'd get four times two, but we just did one of them. So just four times one. Then at the sort, we want influence in orange. We got two, four, six, seven, nine. So definitely met the seven threshold. Four points times two. That's another eight. So around 12 there. And then white dice. Did I do it properly or did I mess it up at the end? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Done it. Only got one of the things there. So that is going to be a nice 16. Not quite 32, but it's on the way, isn't it? Then, remaining stuff. Every four is a point. I have got two silver. One, two, three, four cards. So that is going to be one point at the end. And the bot doesn't have cards. They get a point for every single silver. One, two, three, four. Potentially missed one on there, but we'll see what that ends up as. So let's see, the bot has got 9, 15, 33, 45, 77, 81, I think. And I have got 28, 37, 47, 73, 80, 97, I think. I think... If I've calculated that all correctly and added it up right, I think that that has been a pretty amazing run, win or lose, in terms of stuff done. Look at where these craftspeople are. Look at where my ship is. Look at where my royalties are. Look at the state of my workshop. Look at all the testing that I did. Okay, didn't really do inventing and much building and only did a bit of publishing. But look at the sailing we've done. Having said all of that, as you're thinking, oh, he beat it by loads of points. This is just the standard way of playing the bot. There are, currently anyway, uh, ways to increase the difficulty. You can give your opponent three additional silver and one more of each of the influence at the start in the setup. And you can give them an extra dice scheme each round and you can give them a worker scheme each round. Choose any one of them. Combine them if you want. Uh, to get them to the similar thing but yeah loads of lovely boating loads of influence in the end as well usually end up penniless in the guild because i've spent it for trying to get all the dice back and all that but yeah i, I think stuff uh only really had the idea for whatever it was at the very start of the game was it like publishing well no he published the first thing whatever it was early on to just get that um oh it was get this wasn't it it was do a bit of testing lose the die early on to get that royalties thing and i think uh just all kind of spun out from there beautifully, didn't it? So there is an epic 
<laughs> four hour nearly. I tried, I tried to be as quick as possible. As quick as possible while also playing it properly. Uh, and waffling and umming and and stuff. But hey, it got results, didn't it? There is an epic game of Inventors of the South Tigris and its solo mode. And you can see from that amount of time, you're not spending it doing the bot stuff. It's very easy to see what it's doing. And once you get used to, oh yeah, doing that in that row, boom, boom, boom. Now back to me agonizing over my thoughts over here. It's on Kickstarter right now. It launched today. The link is in the description. You can see how to get hold of it for yourself, all the final stuff, but really everything you saw here is pretty exactly representative of what you will get, right? Maybe like the only differences usually have been maybe a shading of a color of a piece of wood and stuff. It should be pretty representative. You can see all the stuff that you can get hold of, all the other South Tigris things, all the West Kingdom things. You can see my many, 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 many playthroughs for all of those things if you'd like. And you can support me in ways too if you would like to do that. Thanks if you would. I am going to go now and uh, try and wind down and get some sleep. I'm high off a wind now though, aren't I? Thank you so much everyone for being here. It has been a lot of fun and I will see you soon. Where am I seeing you? I'm seeing you in pre-recorded form for a video tomorrow. I think I'll get ink and I'll get ink. And then on Friday, we're doing Gloomhaven buttons and bugs. What a week. Thank you so much everyone for being here and I will see you all soon. Bye, 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 bye. Oh no, it's not over. Thanks to Sherman Sam and all of you in the chat as well, but thanks Sherman Sam for being here. No, actually the credits. Bye. I nearly said it all. I nearly remembered. Mm -hmm.